and Michael Remus. And a happy Tuesday to you all. Bombers Lions Week continues on Winnipeg Sports Talk, and it's great to have you all with us. Actually, kind of a, I wouldn't say, I mean, let's face it, it is the uh, a happy August, everyone. We're now into early August. These are somewhat the dog days of summer, but a pretty interesting sports day. Certainly, if you follow Major League Baseball, Trade deadline goes down in a few hours right now. There's already been a couple deals keeping close tabs on what's happening with the Toronto Blue Jays. Tough loss for the Jays last night. We'll get into that as well. And of course, for our Winnipeg teams, the Bombers and the Sea Bears, they've got huge, huge tilts this week, which we'll get to. And I cannot wait to uh, have Rashid Bailey join us a little bit later on on the program. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, my guy Jelani from the uh, <laughs> from the uh, Winnip- uh, the uh, Winnipeg Sea Bears, who, if you've been to games, I think you've probably noticed that he is one of the most electric players on the entire squad. Um, and we're gonna have him on the program, Jelani Watson Gale, coming up at about 1:25 or so. If you're watching with us live, about 20 minutes, uh, we'll have our first chance to talk to him, see where the the heads are out of the squad after a tough loss at home, but a chance to uh, get right back at it against Edmonton on Friday night. And, um, well, just coming out of the lock shop, too, we have cooked up a little Winnipeg double, a Winnipeg sports talk exclusive uh, if you like the Bombers and the Sea Bears in their games this week. So uh, we'll get to all of that. going to be a fun show. We will talk some off-season puck, though. Uh, Murata Tesh is joining us. Maybe a little earlier than normal this week. With Mike McIntyre out on the uh, on the cruise, uh, as Mike said, we were convinced that something would happen as soon as he got off the grid. So um, anytime, we'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, but Marat coming up later on, and Sea Bears star Jelani Watson Gale and Rashid Bailey of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Shout out to everybody in chat. Great to see you all. If you haven't already, pound that thumbs up button. And uh, if you've uh, just maybe stumbling on the channel, hit that red subscribe button. Winnipeg Sports Talk is here, even in early August, every day for two hours, starting at 1 o'clock Central, right here on the WSD channel on YouTube. And, of course, you can find Winnipeg Sports Talk wherever you get your favorite podcast. Just type in Winnipeg Sports Talk and hit subscribe there. And, of course, we couldn't do it uh, without the great sponsors that back Winnipeg Sports Talk each and every day. Cool Bet Canada, shout out to Dusty. We just banged out a new lock shop. You can check that out as well after the program. Uh, our friends at Princess Auto, Aquatech, Modern Man Barbershop, Canadian Club and Manitoba Battery, Nick and Nicky DQ, F Apparel, Wallace & Wallace, Vita Health Fresh Market, Consolidated Supply, Royal Sports and Boston Pizza, Little Brown Jug, Aikens Lake, Breezy Bend, Assiniboia Downs, and the Winnipeg Gold Eyes. Let's get after it. Michael Remus joins me now as I see Jay Miller. Sheed is a WST MVP here. Exactly, man. I'm I'm really fired up to uh, talk to Remus, but also Jelani Watson, Gail Marat, and of course, Rashid Bailey. Remo, what's going on? Yeah, I'm fired up to have uh, Rashid on. I remember we had him on after they won the Grey Cup. And we haven't had him on since, so uh, nice to see his return. And we're pumped that he's back in Winnipeg because in the offseason, we weren't really sure if they'd have room for him. And then he did sign, and uh, he's been huge with Kenny Aller out and really big in the red zone, uh, big on handoffs, uh, blocking as well. Uh, very solid uh, receiver, Rashid Bailey, and I enjoy his work on the social media. He's got a podcast as well. So I'm looking forward to his return. I mean, Rashid Bailey, and this isn't exclusive to football players, but just of humans, is one of my favorite people just to hear talk. 
I mean, the way he orates, and I, I say this to everyone, you know, even some of his teammates will be talking about Sheed, the passion that he brings to literally everything, anytime he opens his mouth is, uh, listen, it's admirable. And uh, listen, I can't wait to talk to him about this challenge that he and his teammates are going at it on a Thursday night with the British Columbia Alliance. Quick note, and I mean, you know, we'll touch on lines later on, but it is interesting to see where people are feeling about this game, Reem. That yesterday when we did the lines, it opened up at four and a half. And I said on this program, wow, that's a big number for the Bombers. I would expect it to get to three or maybe two and a half, considering how great BC's been. Obviously, there is the fact that the Bombers were on the bye week and BC's on a short week. So there is a considerable advantage to the Bombers when it comes to that. Last night it was five, and we just did the lock shop, and it is at six right now. The Bombers favored by six over BC. So people still recognize the Bombers as the team to beat in the West. But I got to tell you, I was somewhat stunned that that number is where it is because I think this is going to be a slobber knocker, despite the fact that BC is playing on this short week. Their defense and this team overall has been that damn good, and I'm not sure there's a huge drop-off from VA to uh, Dane Evans. Yeah, you, when you started that comment there, I thought you were going to be like, hey, this is um, it's going down. It's more of a pick em. And for people who don't, you know, there's I know there's people who listen who aren't huge gambling guys, but this is the consensus of what uh, Vegas and betters think is going to be, you know, we're going to the game. You need to know the baseline. You need to know what we're expecting to see. And they're expecting the you know, Bombers uh, favored by six points. And uh, I, I am shocked by that, especially because they didn't score a touchdown last time against BC. BC, I guess they're going with BC. He's got the backup quarterback, but Dane Evans looked very good. Uh, the defense, but they just shut out Edmonton for the second time, but we know Edmonton isn't very good. But still, I thought BC's top in the, in the West, 6-1. and one. You know, The only team they lost to was Toronto, who's 6-0. and oh. uh, You'd think BC would be showing a bit more respect here. Uh, I am sh- I'm shocked. My eyes popped out of my head there. When I saw the Bombers were favored by six, just because they've had uh, the two losses, one to BC and the other to Ottawa, Dustin Crum. I mean, the Ottawa game, uh, listen, as, as crazy as it was, I mean, I think you can sort of, you can chalk that one up to, you know, once a season, lightning's going to strike and that was it. The game earlier this season here in Winnipeg was, was not lightning striking. It was, it was the Bombers getting whooped. And uh, listen, we talked to Brady Oliveira about this actually heading into the Ottawa game um, and other players. I mean, they remember that one. And, and, and I think there's a lot of people that really feel like the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to go in and um, basically do what BC did to them um, in reverse in this rematch. But I don't take anything for granted uh, when we're talking about what the British Columbia Lions have done so far. I mean, they've routinely held their opponents to single digits, including Winnipeg in Winnipeg in that game that finished up 30-6. to And, of course, Zach Caleros was on his rear end for half the game. Um, This is a huge challenge for the Bomber offensive line, maybe the biggest they've had in, well, in in a number of years, to be perfectly frank. I mean, I guess you could talk about Hamilton and the Great Cups and what they were bringing on the front line, but... I mean, this BC unit is um, is a problem. And uh, even on short rest, um, the Bombers are going to need to be at their best. And today's practice is closed. Um, you know, tomorrow is going to be the walkthrough. And then it's game time on Thursday night here in the peg. So um, we'll have Rashid Bailey on a little bit later on. But, uh, you know, I just did uh, the lock shop with Dusty out in Edmonton, Reem, and um, you know, he's going to be here to call the game. And, uh, you know, everyone involved in the CFL, everyone that follows this league, whether you're in our market, BC, out east, uh, is going to be tuned in on Thursday night to see what happens at IG Field because this is a battle of two of the best, certainly in the mm-hmm. West right now. And if you include the Toronto Argonauts, two of the best three teams in the league. Um, and there's a lot going into this game considering what happened earlier with that big upset of BC over the Bombers that uh, sent a lot of Bomber fans home feeling a way they hadn't in a long, long time after a a loss like that to an opponent. I mean, I still can't get over the fact they had not lost a divisional game at home since 2018 before that game. And uh, I mean, it speaks to the reason why I think a lot of people still have a lot of confidence that the Bombers are going to be able to get it done. Yeah, it wasn't that they lost. It was shocking how inept 
they looked. They really couldn't get anything going on offense. Zach was on his back the whole night. They didn't score a touchdown. It was shocking. Shocking in a different way um, than, the, than the loss to Ottawa. To the Ottawa. At least, you know, they played well for, you know, most of that game against Ottawa. But there was no part where they played well against BC. And you look at, you know, the league standings, the one stat that they do have on their website has is points allowed and BC with 94 points allowed all season. Part of that, you know, the two shutouts. But that's by far, uh, by 20 points. Um, the least points allowed by any team. You know, Toronto's allowed 124, and they've only played six games. BC has played seven, so this defense very strong, a lot of pressure. And, the, you know, the importance of this game could be who hosts the West final, and that's why it's very important for Winnipeg to try to stay even with BC. They're a game behind. They're at home. BC's on the short week. Everything is set up here, Has for the Bombers. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's a must win, like is is it a must? But like you would really like to win this one. I don't think we're in must win territory here because like they're gonna get in the playoffs. But you'd like to give yourself the best chance at hosting that West Final. We've seen how important home field advantage is, and these are the two best teams in the West, maybe even in the league. Sorry, Toronto. But uh, the, you want to win this one. But I don't Listen, think it's it, not it, it, must it, win. Well, it, it's pretty damn close um, because. And again, there's a lot of things that can happen. Heck, BC has already lost their quarterback for a game. But I mean, BC six and one. The Bombers are five and two. If BC were to win this game, they go to seven and one, and they'll have already clinched the season series between these two teams. They do have one game remaining in Vancouver later on this season. Um, a win for the Bombers ties things up, makes it even on the year. That game will mean everything. Um, but barring, you know, BC falling off the rails in the second half of the season, which I don't think that they will, a win by BC in Winnipeg, sweeping the two games in Winnipeg, I think puts them, um, I mean, obviously in the driver's seat, but it would take a, a, a real turn for the worse on the Lions side of things not to win um, the West and not to have the uh, the West final out in Vancouver. So um, I think the plan for Winnipeg is to win this division. Um I'll tell you what, for that team out on the West Coast, it's a hell of a lot different coming into Winnipeg and winning in November than it is right now or earlier on this year. But they got to make sure that they win this game to, so they have the path to do exactly that. And as I said, next few days, a lot of the talk on this program is going to be on this huge game. Really looking forward to that one uh, coming up. Uh, very quickly, uh, because I know a lot of people were talking Blue Jays in the uh, in the chat Tough loss last night. Heck of a game. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. How many games did the Orioles lose a couple years ago? Was it like 124? You know, like I, one of the historically worst teams that we'd ever seen. Um, well, all that sucking has turned them into a, a hell of a team. Bunch of guys that the average, average fan probably hasn't heard of having big, big years. Um, and, man, they, uh, they got off to another great start in a big series against the Blue Jays last night. But the big story, Reem, was um, the health of Bo Bichette, who on his second hit of the game, which did, by the way, cash our over for the uh, total bases over with our, my uh, daily play for cool bet, um, was injured on that play and was out. And I think that's added a lot of intrigue as to what the Blue Jays do today at the deadline. Um, you know, I've been listening to a couple stations in Toronto this morning, and I'd say there's some guarded optimism about Bo's status. But that didn't stop the Blue Jays from going in, adding a bit of a uh, bit of a cushion when it comes to the middle infielder and uh, picking up Paul DeYoung from uh, the uh, the Cards. Yeah, 29 years old, Paul DeYoung uh, bats right. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, he had 19 home runs. Uh, the bat really came out, but it's been a bit quieter in the power. Uh, no, actually, that's not true. He's got 13 uh, this year. You know, he breaks out a bit, but... Uh, he's, you know, he can have power when needed and his defense, you know, I'm looking at the fan graphs slightly better, uh, than Bo at shortstop. So I think he's a good stopgap solution and you can't replace, uh, Bo Bichette. Um, but I, I do like this move, uh, for the Blue Jays, you know, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I got Bo in one fantasy league that I'm, you know, near the top and I'm pretty nervous about it as well. So uh, we thought the Blue Jays would make some moves. 
I saw some rumors about bringing back Teoscar Hernandez, but they're going with uh, Paul DeJong. And uh, what? He's under contract here. Hey, there's a club option for 24 25, uh, according to Fangraph. So I wonder what would happen there. So uh, I think this is a good pickup um, for Toronto. Paul DeJong. Yeah. I mean, well, especially if Bo's going to be out for a bit. Hopefully that isn't the case. We'll hopefully get some uh, update on that a little bit later on. Uh, the Rockies and Braves made a deal. Veteran reliever Brad Hands heading mm-hmm. to uh, the Braves for a right handed pitching prospect. Explain this one to me, though. The Padres just picked up Rich Hill and G Man Choi from the Pirates. Like, are, are they are, are they making a big run to make up the, the five games and pass how many teams? What do we have here? One, two, three. There's five teams. Or there's three teams tied for the final wild card, and then there's the Cubs at three and a half back and the Padres. I guess when you've invested that much money in a club and you are technically still into it despite three games under 500, you do what they can do. But the Padres have been arguably the most disappointing team in the entire league this season. Uh, if anything, I thought they might be selling off a few pieces as opposed to picking up Rich Hill and G-Man Choi. Yeah, I haven't followed the, you know, Lee would probably be able to speak better than me, but the thing that sticks out for me with the Padres is you look at their run differential, it's second best, sorry, third best in the National League. It's much better. They're at plus 62. Uh, them and the Cubs, the Cubs made a nice ad um, yesterday. I forget actually who it was, but they, you know, they're the two teams outside the wild card race, and they're... They've got, you know, they've got better run differential than the, all the teams above them. So if you believe in math and regression, you like to think some of those runs are going to translate into wins. You know, I don't know if they're losing like these close one-run games and, you know, winning by a ton or a lot, but um, they believe in their team. It's funny we talked about Juan Soto. I mean, he's having a he's having an awesome uh, year too. That was last week we talked about him. So um, San Diego, they're. Hey, they're staying the course. There's still, um, you know, August, September, two months left of baseball. A lot can happen. There are three wild card spots. And, you know, is Arizona, you know, that great? You know, Miami, minus 23 run differential. Milwaukee, minus 16. Are these teams ahead of them that good? We know San Diego's good. If you think, if you still believe in the team, which they probably should, then sure, go add a guy like uh, Rich Hill, who's still in the league and, it's funny, we're making all these trades here. Brad Hands on like his multiple team in the last couple of years, Rich Hill. These are these are guys I start gotta start using an immaculate grid. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, of course. It it always in the middle of summer it somehow comes back to the Immaculate Grid yeah. or Puck Doku. And apparently Immaculate Grid's now cranking out a hockey one as well. Yeah. I saw you tweeting. I I'm saw d- you Xing about the other day. I'm doubling yeah, this is a sidetrack. If you're in, people are coming up to me like, Hey, you're into hockey trivia, you gotta get in this Puck Doku. I'm like, man, Puck Doku's like my entire morning. Um, yeah, the the trivia game where you have to match a player who's played on uh, two different teams or a stat line. So I do I doubled up on the baseball and the hockey today, uh, nine for nine on the grid. So check those out. But it is the trade deadline, and, um, and we'll see what else happens. Uh, I'm trying to remember who the Cubs added yesterday, but they're coming on strong. So uh, some big races here. A lot. I think the races are a lot better with these, you know, three wild card. Spots. I did enjoy when it was like really hard to get into the playoffs. Like it felt like a big accomplishment with only four spots, the division winners plus wild card. Um, but it seems like more teams are in it now, and they do reward uh, winning winning the division, which is which is good. Hey, uh, we are going to talk a little hoops with the Jelani Watson Gale of the Sea Bears in a minute. Murata Tesh is going to join us later on, and I'm sure we'll touch on this. Uh, but shout out to Bailey, uh, the official intern in chat who has just made us aware that in the last two minutes, Elliot Friedman has posted on X that the arbitrator decision for Jeremy Swayman is $3.475 million. So, isn't, that, isn't that the middle? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much where every single one of these are. Um, you know what we should do? The next one that goes to arbitration we should make a wager where we have to, you know, put in what the arbitrator's decision is going to be and see who gets better. In fact, I'm not sure that I couldn't be an arbitrator. I mean, based on the fact that every single one of these generally comes in pretty much right in the middle. That being said, just under three and a half mil a year for Jeremy Swayman. 
Um, so I guess there is now, I mean, he was always going to be an RFA, uh, you know, if uh, he was traded in a deal. We'd speculated that maybe he would make sense for the Winnipeg Jets if Connor Hellebuck wasn't here anymore. But Connor Hellebuck is still here and very much a part of this franchise going forward. Um, this doesn't change the fact that the Boston Bruins are still very, very up against it when it comes to the cap because um, they only had, I believe, about $6 million in cap space. They knew they were going to have to get a deal done with Swayman. That one went to Arb. And then you've got Trent Frederick as well. This is going to probably eat up pretty much the rest of their cap space. So yeah. I don't know what the hell the Boston Bruins do moving forward because, I mean, you just simply can't replace Patrice Bergeron. Add to that David Krejci and having no money to do it. Um, they've got some big-time players with Marchand and Pasta and McAvoy, obviously two really good goaltenders. Um, but I think this team, certainly on paper, is set to take a big, big step back without their leader and a guy that's going straight from that Bruins dressing room to the Hockey Hall of Fame when eligible. Yeah, we have had a couple signings over the last two days. Uh, yesterday was Philip Gustafson going to the Wild, three-year contract, $3.75 million AAV. And Ben Frederick did sign with Boston this oh, yeah, morning. Oh, two, three. Two-year deal for 2.3. And I'm looking at Cap Friendly right now. They don't have the Swayman contract, but they have one, three point. One two nine million in cap space, and that contract was three point four. So they'll be like three hundred thousand uh, over the cap, and you have to wonder what what they're gonna do. And we had a lot of talk about what was Toronto gonna do to get under the cap. They put Matt Murray on LTIR. Now they're still Leafs are still, or is that not a that they can't do that till the season starts, right? So cap yeah. friendly says they're twelve million over the cap right now, but I think Murray will go on when it starts. Muzzin two, I think. That'll What's Muzzin's re- deal? Oh, yeah, Muzzin, too. So Murray's making 4.6, and Muzzin's making 5.6. So that's like $10 million uh, over 10 right there. So they'll figure they'll figure it out. And Boston, yeah, they're... I mean, it's amazing going from best season of all time, eliminated in the first round to the eighth seed, to losing your Hall of Fame you know, center and your second-line center in David Krejci and not really replacing them. And who they lose? You know, they trade for Tyler Bertuzzi. Uh, they lost him, and they traded Taylor Hall. So, yeah, big step back here uh, coming for Boston. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, so uh, Trent Frederick and the Bruins, they reached an agreement, 2.3. Jeremy Swayman gets 3.475 from the arbitrator. So add the Boston Bruins to another of the teams that are capped out in the National Hockey League right now. But as we've discussed for the last little while, I mean – Certainly, if Connor Hellebuck was elsewhere and there wasn't a goalie coming back in uh, in any deal for Helly, there'd be a need for a goaltender here. And either Allmark or Swayman, I think, would look great as part of a tandem with Loren Brassois, who's been signed. But, I mean, if you're not talking about a goaltender, it's very, very difficult to possibly wrap your head around what would make sense for the Winnipeg Jets and the Boston Bruins to do that is possible. Um, and of a player that they would trade. Um, so, anyways, we'll get to that with Murad. I'm interesting to have uh, interested to have Murad on and see what's on his mind right now. Early August, uh, you know, five six weeks before the opening of training camp. Um, hey, let me give a big shout out to uh, a few of the sponsors that make this program happen each and every day. Of course, our friends over at Modern Man Barber Shops have been with us from. The get-go, eight locations in Winnipeg, including the the newest uh, locations on Pembina Highway and over on um, Plessy Road. Um, They've got color services, beard shaping, great haircuts, and more. All you need to do is get on over to modernmanbarber.com. Book your look. Make an appointment there. And uh, when you pop in there for a cut, like Bobby B told me he did at the uh, ball game, you let him know that uh, your boys at Winnipeg Sports Talk sent you. Of course, our, our friends at Aquatech are uh, very much ready to continue summer. If you've been thinking about a pool, um, you know why not make 2023 the year you take the plunge? They've got designers that can give you on-the-spot pricing um, and financing options, and of course. Whole Home Rentals started Aquatech as well. Um, with thousands of rentals as their foundation, you can upgrade any portion of your home. Aquatech would love to talk to you about that. And heck, right now is time to get in because they've got a midsummer sale where everything in stock 
is 10% off. Um, you can find out more at aqua-tech.com or pop down and see them running until the 7th of August, the uh, midsummer sale, 10% off everything in stock over at Aqua Tech. Um, Got to give a big shout out to our friends over at Manitoba Battery. I know they've been powering a lot of people's summers so far this year. If you need batteries for your camper, a boat, uh, heck, lanterns, ATVs, sea dews they've got it all for you and they've got it at the best prices in town bottom line is don't waste your time at canadian tire or in that costco parking lot manitoba battery is going to allow you to shop local get the best price in town oh and better yet they'll deliver it to you anywhere in the city of winnipeg for free that's right any purchase over 60 bucks all you need to do is go to manitobabattery.com or give them a call and of course if you would like to see donnie and his great staff they're always open for you and welcoming you in at 1026 Logan Avenue. Um, and of course, a hey, big one on Thursday night. We'll be talking about it for the next two days before kickoff on Thursday. But bomber football in the summer means a couple of cold CC and ginger ales as well. Or maybe a few trips to the Rum Hut area and the Jim Beam Poorhouse for uh, your favorite of the Beam Suntory family, led by Canadian Club, the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I know there's been a strike at the LCs lately. I believe they're back open. You might need to stock up ahead of August long weekend. Get your hands on it now. Canada's favorite Canadian whiskey, Canadian Club. And of course, you can try the good stuff over at CC, uh, the uh, CC and Ginger Ale. All right, Michael Remus, Andrew Patterson with you on Winnipeg Sports Talk. We are expecting Jelani Watson-Gale to join us coming up in a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm not sure what the move from the Sunday night to Friday does. Certainly we know it makes the, the path for the Sea Bears getting to the, uh, getting to the tournament a little bit more difficult because they got to win at home and then win in Calgary Ream. But I will say this, for the crowd itself, um, I have a feeling this might actually be a benefit. A Friday night game as opposed to Sunday and a long weekend I think is advantageous. And it didn't matter whether it was the fourth or the sixth. Cardinal official coming to do a little halftime show. It's going to be a hell of a way, one way or the other, to finish up the uh, the season on home court. And you got to hope that the uh, Sea Bears are ready to uh, get one more big win at Canada Life Center and then head off to Calgary. Yeah, I know you've uh, you're going to be out of town heading off to Aikens, but uh, I have confirmed us. I'll be I'll be there uh, representing Winnipeg Sports Talk and. You know, looking at the tickets available, cheapest ticket, twenty five seventy five all in. Uh, tremendous value. And I've spoken to a number of people, you know, the last week or so, you know, maybe not like massive basketball fans, but, you know, they've gotten out to a game and uh, really impressed with, uh, you know, the entertainment, the production, uh, you know, and the product that the Sea Bears have put out. And uh, they've done such a great job. And, you know, we've talked about it so much on moving. Uh, how moving to the downtown arena gives it that big game feeling and they have taken advantage. I mean, there's almost, look at these tickets for this, Huss. I'll pull it up right here on the Ticketmaster. Yeah, great call. Let's see what's available. Like, look right at now. this section, this end zone, um, pretty much full. The side's full. It's 200 level full. It's only, the, I think this was the new spot that's not normally open. Yeah, what what's what sections are those? Like, let me get out of. Uh, like one eleven, twelve, thirteen, two hundred nine, two ten. Yeah, yeah that, the, that's the area that's not normally open. Yeah, that they open for the last game. So if those seats are all open right now, mm -hmm. and it will be the full lower bowl, um, they'll be pushing. I mean, if they fill those seats, you're basically looking at um, another nine k plus crowd. Um, and, and to be honest, I think with the momentum the Sea Bears have right now and the excitement and the amount of people that said, oh, I've wanted to get to a game but haven't mm -hmm. done it yet, this last call for Sea Bears basketball in their inaugural season, and uh, what better way to do it than with a lot on the line in a playoff game? Well, Friday night on a long weekend, Huss, what a way to get uh, kick off the weekend and get it going. Nice 8 p.m. start time, too, which I couldn't figure out why it was 8 p.m. both nights. Is that just for TV? Like, are these on... 
No. Uh, well, yeah, and, I, and well, I, I don't think they want the games on at the same time. Oh, there's and another I, game. Okay. And I believe, and you know, I, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure there is um, an Eastern game at six, and then a Western game at seven. So um, maybe you have it. Hey, you know, whatever. Give it. Give people an extra uh, little bit of time to hang out in True North Square with all the cool stuff that the Sea Bears have put on before the games. If you haven't checked that out, especially if you're bringing kids to the game, get out there early, spend a little bit of time. I know Basketball Manitoba's been set up there. There's been all sorts of really, really neat things in and around these games. And then again, they'll have a great halftime show. Should give a shout out. I don't know who the guys were. I should have grabbed the name, but there was a breakdancing expo at the last game at halftime and it was these these two dudes and they were incredible i mean doing things that you know frankly don't look possible to uh, mere mortals like us but they also had like four or five little kids that obviously were part of their programs and these kids absolutely still stole the show it was uh it was really really fun and i mean everything has come up sea bears so far this year with the exception of the result of that last game and uh I don't think there's any other way, Remus, to make a bigger, bigger impact um, in this season than finishing it off, regardless of what happens afterwards, with a massive home win and have that final basket in the target score at Canada Life Center be off a Sea Bears player and uh, have one more celebration and then hopefully carry that momentum into Calgary and make it to Vancouver for the tourney. Yeah, I love the target score because every game ends with a game winning basket it's like overtime all the time and it's kind of funny um you know we've been at a couple of the games and uh i know you've done a great job sitting at with the media table there courtside recording the winner does tremendous numbers uh on our on our social media you got a hildebrandt winner and uh the winner from the first game too so you'd like to see another one of those go off with a bang and and what has been a very successful season i imagine there would be some great pre-game action there true north square and into the game with, oh yeah, pregame with Cardinal Fischel and halftime as well. Very cool. Uh, and you mentioned the great, great production. I remember I went to a Raptors game too, and I went with my wife, and she loved like uh, the, you know, the kid, uh, what do they call them, the little baller dancers yes. there. And I think Sea Bears have definitely taken a page out of um, mm. Raptors and, you know, just been such great crowds uh, all season. And, Everyone in chat saying, "Hey, the, yeah, those tickets there on the you know weren't available yesterday, and they just opened them, so you know, it could be a little less uh, than nine k." Says Schickster, our uh, arena insider. Yeah, well, he is the arena insider. Actually, I will give him that. But I'm pretty sure wasn't the announced crowd in the last game like 9,200? I think I'm... that's what they put out. But bottom line is, whatever it was on Sunday, yeah, uh, or Saturday night. I think they can basically do the same um, because basically the same amount of seats are going to be available. They sold them out for that, and I think there's a very real possibility they'll sell it out again um, for Friday night in the playoff game. Seems like it's like it, and you look at all the record attendances in the CEBL that are in their fifth year. Uh, the Sea Bears hold all of them, and you love to see the momentum here, and uh, people are excited about seeing ball. And I remember I went to the preseason game here. Um, it was T Wolves Bulls a couple of years ago, and I was blown away by the crowd there. And you know, now there's their own team here. People are fired up. They're putting out a good production. Everyone is rocking uh, the merch too. Uh, it's been, you know, it's kind of funny. I'm thinking about it. Like I was at the Valor game Saturday. I'll be at the you know the Gold Eyes game. They've been home all week. We were there last Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, going to the Bomber game. Friday. Sea Bears game, like, and you could have gone to the Gold Eyes game yesterday. Nice five thirty uh, pitch there on the road now, but you know you could see all four teams in a week. Kind of crazy to have um, so many. You know, you know, normally we're talking about hockey and the Jets, but I mean, there's a lot of sports action, and I just just had to you know sit to myself to be like, hey, I've experienced a lot of these teams here in the last week. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's up with Jelani Watson Gale. Maybe got our, figure, our uh, wires crossed, yeah, but uh, I, if he jumps in in the next little bit, great. We'll have him. If not, maybe we'll do that uh, tomorrow or uh, or another day heading in. But, Remo, you just mentioned that you are going to the Bomber game, uh, as I hope most people will be, on Thursday. And I know we went together last time, or you're going to be going with your wife. Um, is Leah all over you to split a yard dog? Kind of funny. 
Uh, no, she's not in me, but but we did post on our social media today, TikTok, Instagram, threads, YouTube shorts, um, the video of us eating, and it's very nicely edited into a 50 second. She texted me right after it was posted, and I didn't want to like ask her, like, hey, do you want to watch this video of us eating this 32 inch hot dog and let me know what you think? Like, I was too embarrassed to be like, but she texted me right after. And she said, what was the, I think she said it was like a great, she goes, I'm very into that reel you made. And I'm like, wow, I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> I thought you would think it's gross. And she goes, the dog was gross, but I liked, <laughs> she liked the, the reel and the way it was edited and she uh, shared it. So, well, uh, I have to tell you, and again, um, I mean, listen, a lot of stuff has been sort of learned on the fly since WST was in, it uh, was created a couple of years ago. Um, you've turned into uh, a bit of a master when it comes to putting the shows on. I did not know you had that club in your bag. As an elite, uh, you're, you're now an elite TikToker. That's what can I say. I, and I think the only way, and some of the people may have seen this, uh, but I think we need the WST world premiere of of this reel, and uh, it, it, it you can tell Remus has been, you know, reading, you know, watching some videos of the things that are key for social media engagement, because literally every one of the bells and whistles you see on most of these viral videos, he has nailed on this. So uh, it was, <laughs> this is an unreal production of the CTO and uh, it does in a lot of ways encapsulate the ups and downs that was our investigative report on the yard dog of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Oh, yeah, and uh, here's the, you know, we played the full version before, the, but uh, here's the TikTok, TikTok. This is how the pros do it, people. Here, one sec. WST investigative report of the yard dog is here. Loaded with pierogies, bacon, green onion, sour cream. I had heartburn before I even ate it. I think the biggest challenge on these is going to be all these little pierogies. Oh my god, this thing is massive. Oh my god, this thing is heavy. This weighs like freaking 10 pounds. It's a dog ratio. You can see that right there. Very thick, man. You can barely lift the thing. See the first bite. We'll do a review right off the hop. Really good. Really good dog. 8.7, now we're ready to go. This is so silly. This was the worst idea. You just gotta keep on plugging through this. The bun is like, is so big and heavy. It yeah. is. He gave us these super shots and made us do this. We came through. This is such a bad idea. Yard dog, we're you done. win. We're done. <laughs> it's one of those things where you got to do it once, or while well, we promised we would do it once, I'm not sure that I could. You know what? If you did it with, say, four people, yeah. and again, we talked about this. I don't believe you're allowed to bring knives to bomber games. Maybe a good, high-quality, thick plastic knife would be helpful. But I think they do want people to eat these on their own, and that's why knives, and they don't cut them when they bring it out to you. Yeah, we, I, you know, after dealing with the chat, when I said, yeah, we have to bring a knife next time so we can cut it and spread our uh, mustard and stuff. They're like, yeah, don't bring a knife to the stadium. That's a bad idea. I was like, oh, yeah, there's probably a really, you know, there's probably, a, it probably is a bad idea. I just wanted to use it to cut a hot dog. But, uh, you know, I said I, I really like hot dogs, but, you know, us uh, tag teaming that, it got to be a bit much. We did eat 99% uh, you know, of it, I would say. And, um, you know, I even had enough for popcorn and uh, CC and ginger after. So <laughs> clearly there was still some some room, room in there. But, uh, you know, it's getting so many views on social media. I'm like, okay, what are we going to do next for our next video? Because it's on uh, our Instagram and our TikTok right now and getting a ton of comments. Um, it's kind of 
kind of crazy and i'm like everyone's like okay so wallaby burger next i think if we ever did anything <laughs> I, we would need like a team of people like i'd be like i think guy fieri what when he does those things he just takes one like he's in his contract it's like take only one bite and then go but i mean we'll have to see there's a, clearly an appetite out there because uh you know we post videos of us talking about sports and nobody cares and then there's videos I was doing something like this. And, this is uh, our niche. This everyone's hitting niche, the like I button. Think. Yeah. Concession food. And and folks, if you know Michael Remus, there is absolutely nothing that gets him going more than likes on social media. I oh, mean, like they, the, the self-esteem levels after this thing was dropped are through the roof. Um, you know, there is like the birth of his children and then the feedback from uh, from these incredible this incredible oh, video. It's like a high every time I get an uh, alert about that. I mean, the, these likes has put food on my table. Like when you hit the like button and the subscribe <laughs> button on YouTube, who are watching right now. So um, I do enjoy uh, tracking it, and it's been. I mean, this was a fun one to put together, and you know, hopefully, we do more stuff like you know more videos that can do that, but. Uh, that was a fun. That was a fun thing to eat that yard dog. We said we were yeah. going to do it, and we did. Uh, thank you, Bomber. Yes. Well, and thanks to everyone that sort of put us up to it. Uh, it ended up being some great content. Now we are going to talk sea bears in a second. I do believe uh, Jelani Watson Gale is going to be ready to go with us and talk about the big game on Friday. We just talked about those extra seats being open. So if you don't have your ticket yet. And you want to make sure you're counted in for, I think we can obviously say, the biggest game in Winnipeg Sea Bears history. It's all coming up on Friday night as the playoffs begin. And let's welcome in one of the stars of Winnipeg's newest pro squad, Jelani Watson Gale, to Winnipeg Sports Talk for the first time. Jelani, welcome to WST. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I got to tell you, we've been spending a lot of time over the course of this um, year or the last couple months, I guess, just speaking about, you know, what a sensation this team has been in the community. I mean, we haven't had a basketball team for a long time. Newest team in the league, um, smashing attendance record game after game after game. Um, how much fun have you had being a part of the Winnipeg Seabears this season? Um, I've had so much fun. Uh, the season's gone by, like, we've, coming up to the end of it, it's gone by so fast. But, yeah, I've loved being in Winnipeg. I've loved every single home game, playing in front of the fans. Um, and I just can't wait for the playoffs, you know. I heard it's going to be up to around like 12,000 maybe. And I know just the atmosphere is going to be crazy in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fans have brought it. You guys as a team have brought it as well. And obviously, I mean, I maintain... If you were in the lineup on Saturday night, we're probably talking about a game on Sunday, not on Friday, because you've been that important. But uh, we'll get to your status and how you're feeling in a minute. I Just before we move on, I have to ask you, like, coming to Winnipeg, what were your expectations? Did you know much about the league? And um, did you have any idea how popular and well-supported that you and your teammates were going to be when you uh, took the court? Um... I don't think I really came here with any expectations, to be honest. Um, I kind of found out about the whole situation quite late. I think I signed probably maybe in like May. So I signed pretty late. But no, I didn't really have any expectations. But like I said before, it's just been great. It's been amazing. Like, especially for me personally, like just the love that I get from the city and the team and the support that we get from all the fans. It's just it's amazing. You, uh, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, I'm not sure whether the league has a six-man award, but um, you would be at the top of that list if I was putting it up. I mean, you haven't <laughs> been starting games. You've been so impactful going right back to the number one game. But I mean, before we talk a little bit about what's coming up this weekend, I think people are noticing um, you have an accent, and it's not an accent we often hear when we're talking to uh, you know the Hoopers and the pro athletes here in town. You're from London, England. Give us a little bit of uh, your background um, and your basketball journey here to North America and obviously in Winnipeg. Okay, so um, I actually started playing uh, football at first in England. I played at a pretty high level. I played for a club called Leighton Orient. And then I started playing basketball around like 11 years old, started taking it serious. 
and I was I was playing both. I was playing uh, football and basketball, but then I decided to take basketball more serious. So I started off like I made the uh, London team, ended up making the national team under 16s. Then um, I actually moved to America when I was 16. I did two years of high school, and then I did completed five years of college. And then this is my first year out, so I just played for the Bristol Flyers in the British Basketball League. Then the season ended on like the 14th. Then I came out here on like the 23rd or 24th. Um, you mentioned football. Obviously, that would be soccer here in uh, North America. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, just just for anyone, we've been spending all this time talking about this huge football game, as we call it, with the Bombers and Lions on Thursday yeah. night. But, um, I mean, basketball is a worldwide sport. Um but how big is it in London? I mean, was it, uh, how would it compare? Obviously, football overseas is everything, but yeah. where, I mean, is it is it popular? And what's the what's the league like that you were playing over there as far as, um, you know, attendances and how many people actually know about it? Yeah, so um, I think the love and the, uh, the sport is growing. It's definitely growing. Like, when I left when I was younger, it's way bigger now. And um, so the league that I played in is called the BBL. And the BBL is, was, is, is on a rise. It's doing well because um, we have the team called the London Lions, who uh, Ryan Schmidt, who actually coaches, who coached on the, um, the Brampton Honey Badgers last year. So the London Lions, they're in the Euro Cup. So they're bringing a lot of attention to the league. Like we've got high level players there. So, like, yeah, the league is definitely growing for sure. What, uh, what, well, what were your family and friends saying to you when you decided, you know what, I'm going to go away from the most popular sport in the world in here, and I'm going to be a basketball player? Um, my parents always just supported anything I wanted to do, and they just wanted me to do what I loved. And when I was playing both, it was evident which sport I loved more. Like, there was times where I would have my football games, and I would go to the park right after with a basketball man. People was looking at me crazy. <laughs> um, tell us about uh, like this year with the Sea Bears. As I said, you have been a huge part of the team's success, coming off the bench in all the games. I mean, how have you felt about your role, and uh, how have you grown as a player playing for Mike and uh, the rest of the uh, your teammates? Okay, yeah. So um, in terms of like coming off the bench, I I actually enjoy that. My my for my team, the Bristol Flyers. I came off the bench also. So like I kind of like that role and I like coming into the game and being able to impact it straight away and have your impact felt. But in terms of this, I feel like I've got a lot better out here. Um, coaches, film sessions, uh, spend a lot of time with our skills training and assistant coach Juwan Brown. He's had a, he's had a, a huge impact on my uh, growth and development this summer. And yeah, it's just, it's easy to play for the Seabirds. When the coaching staff, the fans, and my teammates all have the confidence in me. Like, I have no choice but to have the confidence in myself. Well, you very quickly became a fan favorite in that first game and haven't looked in the uh, back. How are you feeling right now? Because you were definitely missed on the weekend, and uh, yeah. I think everyone would agree they're going to need you. Uh, Friday, hopefully Sunday, and then out in Vancouver for the championship tournament. Yeah, no, I'm feeling a lot better. I think the week, the rest last week really helped uh, with the recovery of my my ankle. And, um, but yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Uh, we just need to, you know, just one last time in front of the fans before we go. So just got to put on a show and get the, get the W. Hey, the uh, city. Jelani Watson Gale of the Sea Bears with us. Tickets are on sale right now. They're going fast Friday night, Canada Life Center. Get them while you can. Um, how have you enjoyed, uh, and tell us a little bit about, you know, your summer in Winnipeg off the court, like away from basketball. I mean, obviously, new community, new country, new culture. I mean, uh, how yeah. uh, how has it all gone for you when you haven't had a ball in your hand? I mean, it's, going, it's been going good. I like the weather. I heard the, the winters are brutal, but... I came at the right time, so. dude. You, if you're, if you're gonna, I, I think this could be huge for Winnipeg tourism. To be honest, having all you guys come <laughs> in and have this amazing time in the summer, which is beautiful, without ever having to put a parka on in the middle of our winters. <laughs> yeah, but no, it's been good. I've met some great people, um, had some good food, gone around, seen the city a little bit, but also just like 
I love how there's times when I'm just walking around and people just show love and, you know, take pictures, interact with the fans and stuff. I love doing that. Um, Jelani, uh, before we go, I, I'm, I, you know, this is a really interesting league and we're learning more about it and you and your teammates kind of day in and day out through this first season. What were you hoping to get out of your time in the CEBL with the Sea Bears? And uh, and do you know what what's next for you once uh, the season wraps up? Hopefully, with another uh, with a multiple wins for you and the boys. Yeah. So um, next season, I've signed to play in uh, Brussels in Belgium. So I pretty much have to go there, like pretty much straight after the season. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to. We always talked about a championship. From the, from the day I got here, from the day everyone got here in training camp. I feel like that's what, every, that's what the goal in everybody's mind. If that's not the goal, then it's like, what, what are we doing here? What are we playing for? So it's de definitely a championship, but it's just like the playoffs is about who gets hot at the right time. Well, so hopefully that's going to be us. Well, and they're going to need that spark. And you yeah, back definitely. in the lineup on the weekend. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, as I said, I, I think it's going to be, I mean, the games have all been bananas, but I mean, this one on Friday night was so much on the line, I think is going to be taken to a whole nother level. I have to ask you, I mean, knowing that, um, and it's been fascinating seeing, usually expansion teams in any leagues, have players coming in and coming out. This yeah. team has become pretty tight um, together over the course yeah. of this season. Considering the experience you have, regardless of what happens on the weekend and going forward, um, is it a safe bet to say that um, if the CEBL and the Sea Bears are a possibility, that you and probably a number of guys might want to be back here next season? Yeah, of course. Um, I feel like we've all enjoyed our time here, and the city is great. The atmosphere is great. Just the whole setup of the setup is good, and we see the league is on the rise as well. So yeah, I think a lot of us would probably consider coming back. Well, listen, um, you can worry about, well, we'll wish you luck in Belgium, but first things Thank you. first, let's uh, get it on Friday night. Good luck yeah. in Calgary. Good luck the rest of the way. And uh, I can tell you, as someone that talks about sports every day uh, here in the city of Winnipeg, it has just been incredible to see the impact that you and your teammates in this organization has made. And, uh, I can tell you the uh, the fans will be ready to go for Friday night. I know you and the fellas will be. And uh, good luck to get two big wins on the weekend. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking about a trip to the championship finals next week on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Congrats on a great season and good luck on Friday night. Thank you. Thank you. Great having you. There's Jelani Watson-Gale. He, uh, and I've said this to a number of guys that have been there, very quickly became a fan favorite of myself and everybody else. I mean, the energy that he brings in and the big baskets that he's made. Um, uh, if you haven't been to a game, you'll uh, you'll notice him very quickly when he gets out on the court. And again, Friday night is the playoff game for the Sea Bears. Get your tickets now. Don't get left out. All right, we are going to talk a little off-season hockey in just a second. Before we bring Murata Tesh in, I do have to thank Vita Hell for their great sponsorship and support of our program. And hey, if you're looking for great prices on natural and organic groceries, supplements, beauty products, they've got it at Vita Health, along with Winnipeg's largest selection of local products from a great local family-owned company. Barbecue season's here. Gang, if you're looking for something incredible to put on the grill, check out Vita Market grass-fed bison and beef steaks. And uh, don't forget, there is plenty of uh, options to do maybe outside the city. You're doing a picnic, you're doing a beach day. Vita Health Grab and Go Lunch is available right now, and you'll get a free sapsucker drink all month long with any of the Grab and Go lunches. Um, Vita Health Fresh Market, empowering people to lead healthy lives. Seven Winnipeg locations, six Winnipeg locations, I should say, and online at myvita.ca. Hey, if you are in the need for fencing or an overhead door, you probably know where to go already, Wallace and Wallace, because they've been doing it since 1946. The experts in both. Uh, if you're looking for the security and protection of a new fence, they've got vinyl, ornamental, welded wire, chain link, or wood fences. And if you're in the market for a garage door, get on down because they have Winnipeg's largest selection of overhead garage doors. Definitely something that'll fit perfectly with your home. Uh, all you need to do is give them a call at 452-2700. The Wallace and Wallace team will arrange a time to come out and give you a free estimate. You could also check them out online at wallacefences.com 
or pop down to their showroom on Lawson Road off of Keniston. Fellas, how's that uh, closet looking? Need to step up your menswear game heading into the fall? Well, there's only one place to do that. F Apparel down at 190 Smith Street. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. Uh, F's got a 15% discount for wedding parties as well, so if you're planning a wedding in the future, talk to the guys at F about getting the fellows looking great for the big day, and obviously they'll be able to use those suits after the big day as well. 190 Smith Street, Make an appointment or find out more online at F, that's E-P-H, apparel.com. And a big shout out before we bring Murad in to our pal DQ Nick. Of course, Michael's big birthday party for Evan wasn't complete without a Hot Wheels ice cream cake. Uh, if you're having a party like that or an event, you want a special cake that up, hit him up online at DQ Manitoba on Instagram. Send him a picture, he'll get it all done for you. And, of course, you can pop into any of the four Nick and Nicky DQs and see what's there, including all the great summer blizzard flavors. Visit them at DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's, and DQ Niverville. All right. Let's welcome in Murat Atesh of The Athletic to the program. Murat, what's going on? How are you? Hey, I'm doing all right here, Huss. How, how are things in your world? Well, things are good. You know, I mean, the hockey-wise, things are quite slow. A couple of arbitration awards and a couple signings. Um, but, I mean, this week, you know, in the dead of summer, first week in August, um, we're talking about a huge football game with the Bombers and Lions coming up on Thursday night. And then, of course, the Sea Bears playoff game. Have you gotten out to any of the basketball games yet this year? No, um, just getting back into town. This weekend, maybe it's kind of tempting at this point because – uh, I heard that interview and the buzz and just like this sense of fun that the Sea Bears seem to have about them. It's uh, it's kind of appealing right now, got to say. Yeah, well, Friday night is uh, it'll be the place to be in Winnipeg and I I mean I mean I've been to most of the games and it's been really cool seeing how, you know, the crowds have grown and I mean now, I mean it's such a short season. I think people are sort of shocked that wait a second, it just started and now the season's over, but that's the nature of a smaller league. Um, so anyways, Friday should be a heck of a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have some more games to talk about next week. As far as the hockey goes and the jet scene right now, um, you know, it's funny. I've been listening to you and we've chat chatted over the last little bit. Despite the fact that it's very quiet on the trade front and there are a number of things we're still waiting to hear and, you know, maybe get some conclusion on, including some signings here in Winnipeg, the interest in things like your mailbags and the bigger Jets questions that haven't entirely been answered by this offseason seem to be maybe more so than ever right now. I mean, I, I, it, it amazes me nonstop at just how dialed in Winnipeg Jets fans are, even on the 1st of August, um, because there is still is a lot of intrigue with this club going into next season. Yeah, it's honestly incredible. And the numbers for the, the pieces that I've written, including those mailbags, pretty impressive. Um, I think I think that when a team has so much gray area and so much is in flux and the pans are the pans are so passionate, let's get better at this, Murat. The fans are so passionate. Um, there is a sense of off season, like people want to know what the solutions are, especially with Hallibuck and Shifley's contract situations. But Hus, let's. I, I wonder if I can. I, I don't know if you've done this uh, recently, but you know we're, we talk a lot about these twenty twenty four UFAs, right? And and Hellebuck and Shifley are are number one and two in you know among that. But they're not the only guys, right? Like there, there's Nino Niederreiter facing down free agency. Um, there's Brendan Dillon. There's Dylan Demello. And like that's something that okay, every now and again we we talk about a little bit. But have you ever peaked just around the corner after next summer, heading into the summer after that twenty five twenty six that season, <laughs> where Ehlers, Ilo, Appleton, Nemesnikov, um, Schmidt and Pionk as well, and, and Winnipeg doesn't have any goalies signed to be on this season right now as well. Like, if you want to do this sort of off-season prognostication of where is this franchise going, it's infinite in terms of the possibilities for the Jets right now. I, I mean, you know, and again, it's very difficult to compare 
sport to sport based on contracts. And in the NFL, I mean, they call it the not for long league as much as any. But I'm a big Chiefs guy. Everyone knows. Chiefs won the Super Bowl in 2019. They won it again last year. There was three players from the 2019 team that were on <laughs> that were on the team in 2023. Like th this team more than almost any in certainly the National Hockey League and I would offer pro sports carried a core for far longer than a lot of other teams that teams did and listen there was a slow build up to where they were at 2018 2019 I think the organization felt that you know they had a group that was definitely willing to you know it was ready to compete and they kept a number of those guys and obviously some of those moves were great some of them haven't but to your point like after two seasons from now with the exception of Josh Morrissey, Adam Lowry might have a, thir a third year on his deal. I could be wrong on that. He could be of the two. I mean, Connor, Ehlers, literally everybody on this team will need a new contract or could be different. And, you know, there is part of me, and I listen, I understand what the organization has said. We're trying to stay the course. We believe in these guys. And, and you know, there are unique challenges with getting people to play in Winnipeg and stay in Winnipeg. But you are not wrong to bring up the possibility that 24 months from right now, we could be doing our weekly hit on Winnipeg Sports Talk, talking about a team that looks nothing like the squad that's going to be dropping the puck in game one of the season. Absolutely nothing like, and that's something that I think with so much focus on the short term, you know, we don't really get into so much because Winnipeg's in a bit of a pickle trying to figure out what's happening with Hellebuck and Shifley now. But if you look beyond the season where, you know, Hellebuck's not signed, Bersois not signed, all the guys in, in concepts that you've mentioned, I think that, you know, the opportunity for some tremendous turnover, which you don't really see in Winnipeg, like you said, it's it's unique. And, you know, I've been thinking about this. I, I went back and I read some of what I used to write in 2018 after that Western Conference Finals run. And, you know, I was I was saying things well, like, well, this is the most cap efficient team that Patrick Laine will ever play on. Like, this is a unique window. Celebrate the now. Celebrate the now. However, Winnipeg is well positioned to take this peak that it has right now um, with Mark Shifley and, and Blake Wheeler. They're so good right now, so impactful. The young way with Line and Connor and Ehlers, all these sorts of things. The only thing left is to figure out how to transition from one to the next and Winnipeg can stay competitive and go deep into the Stanley Cup playoffs time and time again. Um, the thing that they're sort of up against right now is that they're starting from a lower peak. Winnipeg it was a first round playoff exit. And I think that that was a realistic, you know, uh, accomplishment for the roster and the team and how they played. I think if you keep Hellebuck and Shifley, you could imagine them competing for a playoff spot again. But you got to figure out how to get from this group to the Cole Perfetti, Gabriel Velarde, Brad Lambert, Rutger McGroarty, Chaz Lucius, Dom DeVincentis. And you got to hope that enough of those guys hit that you're, you know, that you're backfilling at the very least, you need some things to go right to improve. You need some things to go right just to sort of tread water with this organization, I think a little bit. Um, and now they're starting, like I say, from a lower peak. They're not just fresh off of Western Conference finals. Um, they have maybe a group that's not quite as elite as a 23 and under group that, you know, Winnipeg would have had back then. And they've got to figure out how to pass the torch from these guys to those guys. And as the Jets are want to do, there's no rebuild coming. They want to try to make the playoffs while they do that as well. So that's a lot of a lot of conflicts and a lot of tension points, I think, that make Shovel Dayoff's job hard, not just now, but throughout the season into next summer as well. Yeah, just to uh, to clarify. So 24 months from now, the only players that will still be on their present contracts will be Kyle Connor, who will be in the last year uh, of his seven-year extension in 25-26. Adam Lowry will be in the last year of his deal. It was a five-year deal. 
And, uh, of course, Josh Morrissey, who's going to be the backbone of this blue line for a long time, will still have a couple more years. Um, and, and, and I guess in the short term, what's fascinating is who of the players on this club will be extended at some point, you know, of the guys that are pending UFAs this season. Um, God knows we've spent enough time talking about Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck, and we'll find out what happens with those players. But what I'm really interested in, and, and, and it's weird because he's been here for such a short time, but everything that we've heard from Nito Niederreiter and the way he's fit in with this organization, I think that it's likely that he at 30 years old would get a two or a three year extension. I think they'd like to have him around, especially as a guy that can, you know, be a veteran that, you know, younger players like a McGrory and Lambert, those sort of guys can lean on. Um, and then of course you've got Brendan Dillon and Dylan DeMello. And I mean, Dylan's two years older than DeMello. And I think with the want and the history of big defensemen making a difference in the playoffs, I think his value around the league at the deadline you know, could be quite interesting. But let's say Dylan DeMello does stick around. You're still talking about a number of players that are either walking, if you take them into the playoffs and roll through, um, you know, or you've got to make something happen to, to keep them around. And to me, so much of this depends on the, the, um, the way the organization thinks and feels about what we've all been told. Oh, they want to be a playoff team. It's about competing. And I get it. Like, would I rather go to playoff games and have the team in the playoffs than not? Well, absolutely. But at the same time, I think when we back up a little bit and get the wide view of the next number of years of this club, um, I would certainly make the argument that I think in some cases this season, some short-term pain for long-term gain is going to be absolutely necessary. And that might be weakening the team a little bit basically at some point in the season or going into the deadline because of what that might mean for your club when Lambert and McGrory and all these young players are seemingly coming in and ready to make an impact that they won't be coming into a team that is kind of starting over because all the players that you've had that have been such a big part of the core are all gone nearly at the same time or in that same couple of seasons. Yeah, I think the easiest sort of spot to use that as an example is sort of what's happened on defense over the years. And like the idea, you know, of, of Dylan and DeMello, well, in, in those guys' case, they're probably not, not probably, they're definitely much higher quality than some of the other um, defensemen that have, you know, quote unquote, blocked younger players paths in, in recent Jets history. And we've talked this to death. I mean, you can go to the, you know, the waiver wire years and the, you know, Spiza and Batetto and, Etc. I mean, the the list can can become quite long. What Winnipeg has shown in the past is that they're not really afraid of losing those bubble UFA type players for nothing. I mean, even Tyler Myers walked getting a better deal elsewhere when Winnipeg didn't have the cap space to to match anything that Vancouver could do. And Winnipeg is really fond of Tyler Myers. So they've shown a willingness to play veterans into their unrestricted free agency because they believe that those veterans are helping the, the club win now. And I think heading into this season, you expect exactly that same thing. Um, one of the reasons why the log jam isn't immediately clear is because Winnipeg wants to win. You know, we talk about that. And I think that you're, you know, we're not about to see at least before September, you know, a Dylan DeMello or a Brendan Dillon or a Nate Schmidt or a Neil Pionk or any one of the veterans who from time to time you hear fans, well, Hey, I wish that, one of them would move so Dylan Samber could play in the top four or Logan Stanley could get a role or Ville Hanel or Declan Chisholm could get in there. Um, I don't think that's happening. And I think that your point about sort of short-term pain, if you sort of take it to the trade deadline or further, probably is more interesting this year than it's ever been before because all of those players are better than the Beaulieu generation of UFAs or the Tucker Pullmans or all of those players that Winnipeg at various times convinced itself that it was fond of, played instead of its prospects and lost for nothing. I think that here's a situation where, and I get into this on Twitter sometimes and in the comment section at The Athletic, where people are wondering, like, what's the opportunity cost of these veterans now versus figuring out or giving some runway to your younger players not losing Shizomar Kovacevic or whoever else it's, it's got to be and what the payoff could be. 
And I think everybody agrees that the kids aren't as good as the veterans, but is there a way to make tomorrow better um, if you move on from some of these guys? And I don't think the Jets are interested in doing that. Complicating the whole thing has been with the, the, the trade market. And I mean, I, I, I am uh, fully of the opinion that the organization, Kevin Dayoff would have preferred to have made a few more moves over the course of, you know, this offseason leading into the draft, leading into free agency that just did not materialize. And uh, I mean, you know, part of it is the hard cap going up $1 million. Teams are in a very difficult situation with their own players just to resign, never mind considering adding others. That could lead to opportunities in some places, and we'll see if that kind of comes together. There's some teams that need to get rid of some players and rid of some cap space. But, I mean, there wasn't a single trade made in the entire first round of the draft, Marat. Um, There wasn't a ton. I mean, in fact, the job that they did in getting what they did for Pierre-Luc Dubois, considering the situation, I think is commendable. But, I mean, when there's not a lot of interest, never mind Dylan or DeMello, I mean, when Mark Shifley is on the market for a number of months and it's crickets, when Connor Hellebuck, arguably one of the top handful of goaltenders, as consistent as anybody and as proven as anybody in the league, you know, has some teams, oh, we'd love to have them, but it's just not realistic. Like, I mean, to me, it all points to some very tough decisions being made at some point during the regular season. And I think for the team, the earlier, the better for those. Because as I said, I think this team is good enough that they can certainly contend, especially if Hellebuck's playing night in and night out. And then you get into, man, I mean, a real catch-22 where, you know, if you make those sort of deals that are more for the future than the present, I mean, what does that do to your ability to keep some of the guys that might feel that you're sort of giving up on the season? Um, like, I'm almost more concerned about what it does to the players than the fan base. I'm not sure that most of the fans wouldn't understand the situation that the team is in. And, hey, if they can possibly squeeze into the playoffs and, you know, give us some games and see what happens as big underdogs, great. But what does this mean for the next couple of years? I think the majority of fans would get that. I don't think the players in the locker room would get that very much. They would say, what the hell is this? We've worked all season long to try to give ourselves a chance to win, and you're trading – this guy now, I mean, it, it's a tough situation for a GM and a team to be in. Well, I floated this theory before, and I, I've actually talked to people around the league who seem to think it makes sense theoretically. And that's, you talk about the, the Hellebuck trade market, right? You know, you've got the elite goaltender. He's 30 years old. Historically, that's a guy that people want. People are willing to pay assets for. Okay, he's one year away from free agency. But, you know, they haven't always seen 30 as particularly old goaltending, especially at the elites. People used to be willing to pay for that. And I don't think Winnipeg has found that teams are willing to pay for that right now, even at one year of this guy at six point one seven million, which is a heck of a contract. That's a value contract for Connor Hellebuck. Um, I think that if there had been a scorching hot trade market, you may have seen that move because I think he's ready uh, to, to consider moving on. So in the absence of that, I continue to believe that there are teams who think that they have their goaltending situation, if not solved, at least patched over right now. Like, oh, you know, the guy that showed 20 games of strength, well, we believe in him now. Where our platoon that we've got, we believe in that now. And I don't know if that's, you know, I mean, Boston can probably feel comfortable going back to Omar and Swayman. That's fine. Uh, New Jersey got some really good games from Akira Schmid and otherwise Vanacek, et cetera. Like there's, there's some issues there. Uh, Buffalo could give their crease to Devin Levi this season and hope. But I think that somewhere in the league, there's a team that thinks that they have their goaltending situation solved. That's going to be a goalie away from a deep run when they look at their midseason uh, situation. And they're going to think to themselves, well, shoot, Connor Hellebuck at now $3 million cap hit? That's tempting. We'll pay for that. And so I've thought that from a pure assets perspective, looking at things only in a vacuum, that there might be better value. And we've talked about this, but I've written this before, the, in, in trading Hellebuck mid-season or trade deadline. But then you go to your point and you think, well, hey, these guys are human beings. Winnipeg is assumed to be, if Hellebuck's playing for them and Brassois backing up or they have a tandem or whatever, 
that's a playoff competing team, not a guaranteed spot, but you have to think they're in the mix. And if you're going to take that player away from a team that's looking to, you know, get to the playoffs, play more than the two home games that they got this year, for example, get that revenue, give itself a chance, all of those sorts of things, ideally play without so many of its star players hurt even um, in the first round of the playoffs. It would be a gut punch to watch somebody like that step out of the lineup. Like I, I can't imagine the season Brassois would have to have in an excellent way and the horrid season Hellebuck would have to have that would sour people's perception on him so much that players in that room would be like, oh, yeah, this is actually good for us to get, you know, a first round pick, a goaltending prospect and a whatever for somebody like him at the deadline. And I think... None of the players care about first round picks because <laughs> the nature of the game is they're probably not here when these guys become players for the club. Yeah, absolutely. Like no, no chance. And especially in this window with guys one year away from their UFA years, two years away. Like, I think that bridging the gap between this generation and the next depends on, on some of that competition. And so it's, my opinion, like it's probably most people's opinions, that there's a lot of pressure if Winnipeg could figure something out in and around the short-term Hellebuck extension, it would buy them so much time. If you could do Hellebuck at two or three years right now, something that will get you to the next generation, keep the team playoff competitive, almost no matter what happens in front of him with the defense or the offense or what have you, um, you're not running the post 33, 34 years of his age. I know that it's been, and we've sort of discussed it as sort of that door is shut, but I think that there's got to be some desperation and some will on that front. And maybe even some realization on Hellebuck and company's part too, that hey, the market hasn't been that hot. It would paper over a lot of problems in a big way and buy this team a chance to do with do what I think that ownership and management wants, which is give itself a shot. I don't think there's a lottery pick future in this team's future. I don't think that there's like a, a spend all this cap space and get a bunch of shiny UFAs sort of thing in the future either. I think they're trying to paper this over. And I think that Alibuck's their their best and most realistic and honestly a realistic shot at doing that well and, and you know what? okay this this is a great point and, and i am completely here for it let's look at it a little bit more if one of the issues with connor hellebeck being traded somewhere was the ask for a seven or eight year deal at you know nine nine and a half pushing ten and, and the realization that teams probably don't have an appetite to do that if the Winnipeg Jets, and I would be fully on board with this, want to pay him maybe even a premium for everything that he's done to stick around here, if it is on a shorter-term deal, I mean, if it's 10-5, if it's 11 on two or three years, listen, I would far rather invest an extra million and a half dollars in, Con in prime Connor Hellebuck without having to commit to those... I mean, listen, I would also sign him to an eight-year extension, but it just wouldn't be at that number because I think you'd know that on the back end of that, there's the danger that it wouldn't be that same value. But, I mean, to Ray Petkow, to Hellebuck, it doesn't marry him to Winnipeg for the rest of his career if he does feel like he would like to play somewhere else at some point. It gives him a short enough window that, you know, there could be a trade at some point, but, I mean, there's still another contract after that. And the bottom line is... He gets paid what he has earned and is worth in this league, at least for those first three years, so that, you know what, if his next deal is four years at five or six million, well, you do the math, at the end of it all, you're getting paid what that long-term deal would be. It's just the Jets would be paying more for those prime years, and then he'd have the opportunity to do it. And I guarantee you, you pump the truth, sir, not that you need to ever do that with Connor Hellebuck and say, where do you think you're going to be in three years? He'll tell you, I'm going to be the best damn goalie in the league, and I would take my chances on that. So if it's not a real want to leave uh, and there's not the appetite for that eight-year deal, I think there's a lot of logic to what you just mentioned right now, and I think the benefits to this organization would be, put it this way, would be well worth every cent they're giving them. Well, I think Winnipeg has a lot of reasons to believe in that. And one is purely the quality of the player. 
Uh, another is, you know, optics wise, keeping an elite player and showing the world that, you know, that Blake Wheeler wasn't the last elite player that you're willing to reward for great service to the city. Um, probably there's something to that for sure. I think from Hellebuck's perspective, there's there's no way in my mind that he wouldn't bet on himself. I, I just, I guess we've all become accustomed to him, you know, making bold proclamations and meeting most of them. You know, it's it's been an impressive run in terms of his growth from where he was drafted all the way to now. Um, I think for me, I I guess one of the worries about that I would have about Hellebuck is the lose him for nothing like Columbus did Bobrovsky once upon a time. That's that's terrifying. But keeping him expensive for more than, I want to say, two years, maybe three is the compromise, is frightening to me because I am at the point where maybe it, this is too anecdotal and I've just listened to too many Andre Vasilevsky interviews, but he's talking about year-over-year year fatigue now in terms of impacting his uh, his ability to stay together down the stretch. And if Vasilevsky, like the best of this generation, probably, if it's not Hellebuck, um, you know, is having those issues and Winnipeg is working hella buck harder. He's a little bit older. We've seen some of those mid thirties years not go as well for Bobrovsky for price. Even, even though it seems like every other year, every once in a while, they can still reclaim their form for a stretch. I think that probably the advantage to Winnipeg in terms of finding a way to get from here to whoever their next goalie is, is worth paying a premium. But I also don't think it's a guarantee that if you look at Connor Hallibuck's next five seasons, my guess is maybe three of them are, are, are very good to elite. Like I, I'm not so certain that goaltending is reproducible, especially at this Asian workload, that it's a sure thing. Now, Winnipeg doesn't have any other options that I'm aware of other than trading for somebody or signing somebody who isn't as good as Hallibuck is now. And that might be what makes going back at him for big money short term more palatable to the team as well, I think. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, I mean, to, I mean, to me, it is the number one story because you nailed a number of points. I mean, if you're able to get him back, I mean, just imagine on a two or three year deal what that does to, you know, these young goaltenders that are a few years away. I mean, whoever is the guy that, you know, ends up playing their first couple years in the league under Connor Hellebuck, I mean, what does that do for him as far as showing him what elite le- goaltenders do day in and day out? I mean, there's there's so many benefits to it. And, I mean, even if, you know, there was a no-move con- clause and just wanted to take it right to free agency and you're not trading him at the end of it, I mean, to me, his impact with this team, I mean, it, it's almost difficult to measure right now. And a lot of other teams, when they're keeping their best player, and make no mistake about it, Connor Hellebuck is the Winnipeg's Jets' best player, have to roll out $11 million a year for eight years. So if there is the possibility to doing that, I think, uh, I think it would make a lot of sense. Whether there's the appetite on both sides, I'm not sure, but I'm... Uh, I'm sort of with you that a lot of the things that Jet fans are freaking out about and frankly probably keep Kevin Day off up at night probably um, get you know, a, a little less scary and certainly you got a little more time to work with it if something like that could be uh, could happen. Now, Marat, before we go, what do you got cooking in the Athletic over the next little bit? Well, you know, I'm kind of on this topic because I've been projecting Winnipeg's roster. I got a piece coming up where... We're not talking just about opening night roster this year, but next year's opening night roster and the, and the one after that, trying to get realistic timelines for these guys. Because you know what? I'm a big believer in Dom DeVincentis, but the percentage of goalies who become Connor Hellebuck is small. <laughs> the timelines that it takes are unpredictable and it's not instant. So how do you get Winnipeg from today to tomorrow and maintain management's goal of attempting to win. There's so many moving parts, and I just thought that's a good summertime puzzle to, to dig into. So um, I look forward to, to sharing that. I've spent a couple of days on it at this point. Marat, always great having you on the program. Enjoy what should be a great week, and uh, we'll uh, hook up next week with a little bit more on the Jets offseason as we get closer to September and training camp opening. Right on. Thanks, Us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's just about showtime on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, just before we bring in a very special guest, 
it's the game. This probably is the game of the season uh, at home um, for the regular season. Little redemption time for the Bombers. BC Lions Thursday night. Kickoff is 7.30. You know what that means. The Princess Auto Tailgate Zone opens at 5.30. $5 beers, $3.50 popping hot dogs. DJ Finesse going to be spinning. Get there early. Enjoy it. And then get ready to get loud. And behind the Bombers on Thursday night. Princess Auto, proud sponsors of Winnipeg Sports Talk and the Blue and Gold. And then a place where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Uh, everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Two Winnipeg locations, and you can shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Lots of summer projects still continuing. You have needs when it comes to irrigation for your property? Or were you thinking about artificial turf? Maybe that dream putting green in the backyard. Uh, certainly if you've had any golf cart needs, our friends at Consolidated Supply are the leaders in everything I just mentioned and also the official club car dealer in Manitoba with some incredible vehicles with a uh, in industrial use as well. And listen, other great options for your property, including hot tubs and amazing outdoor kitchens. Consolidated Supply has so much going on. you got to stop by and see them at their showroom, open to the public, 1395 Niagara Road East, or find out more online at cte.ca. Speaking of that bomber game, you got your blue ready for Thursday night? You can always pop down to Royal Sport and see some of the best selection of bomber merchandise and gear. And might I suggest a blue 88 jersey might look good in the stands. Of course, Royal Sports is the uh, ultimate sports store. Tons of Bombers, Jets merchandise, Seabears hats for the big game on Friday, and so much more, not to mention the biggest hockey selection in the city. Soccer, baseball, softball, tennis equipment, disc golf, and a huge selection of bikes. Pop down and see them, 750 Pemina Highway. Follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina. And a big thanks to Boston Pizza for their support. By the way, I think I mentioned this on Monday, yesterday. There's no better place to watch the UFC than BP. I went to the Sea Bears game on Saturday night. Then I posted up and watched the fights at Boston Pizza. Um, obviously, you're familiar with the delicious schooners, the world famous wings, the gourmet pizzas, the great feature menu right now. But there really is no better place to watch the big game with big sound on the big screen than your local Boston Pizza. And if you're staying at home, you can always order online at bostonpizza.com. All right, everyone, buckle up. A WST Hall of Famer is about to roll in, getting ready for a massive game on Thursday night. Recently, the birthday boy, we will wish him a belated and welcome Rashid Bailey, Showtime Sheet himself to the show. In the Rashid, building. Rashid, in what's, the up? what's up? What's <laughs> up? What's up is uh, we're fired up. This entire city's fired up for this game on Thursday night with the BC Lions coming in. Um, how are you feeling right now? What's the vibe around the club as you get a crack at a team that came in and did something no Western Division team had done since 2018, and that is win at IG yeah. Field? Yeah. I mean, listen, man, we're on point right now. Uh, you know, had some time to, you know, see family, had some time to take some days off uh, for the bye week. Um Everybody's refreshed. Everybody's, you know, feeling good. Everybody's healthy. We're ready to get back out there and play for each other. You know, like, I know everybody's trying to say this is a redemption game and all this type of stuff like that. But listen, you know, we owe it to each other. We owe it to each other to to bring more than we brung la what we brung last time. And also to bring more to these fans. You know, like, I remember, like, playing that game and and we got whooped. We got, we got spanked. And, um, you know, I saw the fans leaving during the fourth quarter. And that was the first time I ever seen that. So, uh, you know, we definitely got some, we, we definitely got uh, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of energy built up for this one. Um, it is building up. You can feel the energy. Um, all the guys are fired up and we're ready to go. You know, it, it's funny you, you mentioned the end of that game because uh, um, I, I left, you know, with, thousands of fans yeah. and you know you got all the buses lined up and i mean yeah. usually that ride home is people are whooping and mm -hmm. and i mean it, it wasn't like people were pissed off they were just kind of shocked yeah. i mean it had, it had been so long since we've seen the Bummers yeah. lose a game but i mean that was listen i thought that was a big statement game by the bc lions and especially that defense and this defense yeah. is for real man i mean they just had another shutout on the week 
Uh, it was six points in that game. I mean, uh, I know you guys have been working on this, but um, this defense is a legit challenge. And I think you and everyone in that locker room know from that game and just watching what's happened since then yeah. that this could be uh, an incredible test to to prove that the Bombers are still the team in the Western Division. Yeah, I mean, like I said, man, it's it's always about us and what we do well. Um, sometimes the giant gets beat up sometimes. And um, sometimes it's all about how you respond. You know, I just recently, you know, just dropped my latest podcast and I talked about responding. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it takes for you to lose to really figure out who you really are. Um, they have a great defense over there. They do some things well. They, have, they are really good up front. Um, they have our respect. Um, but we're coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, 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 sometimes it takes a little time for, for for the offense to click a little bit. You know, defense is doing some great things. Um, we're a team that's still trying to – we're still we're still ironing things out. And um, we're excited to get back out there to prove, you know, who we are and what we're about. Um, but more so not to prove it to anybody, but to prove it to ourselves. You know, we all watch, you know, the film together. We see what we – we see what we did wrong. We know what we need to get better with. Um, and it's all going to come down to winning your one-on-one. And that's what we're going to do. Rashid Bailey with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. She, you mentioned the bye week. Uh, how did you spend the bye week? And uh, how perfect was the timing for the bye week for the Bombers, considering what was to come uh, after it? Um, to be honest, I wasn't really too focused on what was to come after. Um, I've been more present in the moment of where I am and where my feet are right now. Um, it was really good to sleep in a few days, you know, really get your body back. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a guy who, you know, I would just speak for myself. You know, I'm in the trenches. I'm in the box. I'm doing some, I'm, I'm, I'm blocking DNs and linebackers and catching footballs and, and, and doing the dirty work and, and doing what the team is asking me to do. So for me, it was really good to kind of reset my mind, you know, see my family, you know, spend some time with people that I love, um, explore Winnipeg a little bit. You know, I spent my birthday here uh, with a couple of my teammates and, um, shoot, man, I, you know, it was really good to just to, 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 to refocus and reset and get the mind ready for this six game, the six or seven game stretch that we got coming ahead. Um, I'm excited though, man. It's like, when you, like, when you think about it, man, we're blessed to play football. We're blessed to play the game, man. But sometimes, you know, some things are bigger in those moments and, you know, spending time with family and spending time with the people you love, man, it always helps you, you know, recenter yourself and get back to, you know, where you need to be so you can refocus and come back ready to hit it. You mentioned taking a little bit more of the city. I mean, I, listen, you guys are so busy. I mean, the 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 game, like the 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 schedule you guys have, getting in early, getting treatment, working out, practicing, focusing on the game plan. I mean, you know, while the season is on and you got a game that week, there's not a lot of time to get out there. No, nah, yeah, it's a grind. And, it's a grind. Well, and, and and you know, traditionally in the past, I mean, a lot of guys have kind of taken off. Yeah. It didn't seem like there was very many bombers that left. Um, and I think it was important to stick around. No, and, yeah, know, some and- of the main, yeah, some of the main guys did stick around. Um, but a lot of guys went home. Um, I think it really is a good, you know, it's good for guys to to go home, uh, to to kind of reset. You know, I used to be one of those guys. Um, but I was very fortunate enough to see my family in Ottawa. So they made the trip from Philly. They came down, and I got a chance to see my mom, my brother, my sister, I got a surprise visit from my grandma. They traveled oh, nine hours. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for me, you know, I, I seen the people that I loved. So it was like kind of cool for me to do that. So like I kind of saved money by staying here and uh, kind of reset and get my apartment together. You know, I got a nice little couch now on TV. It's starting to feel like, you know, starting to feel homey. Uh, so for me, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just a kid, you know, playing a game that I love, man. And like I said, man, we're excited for this game. Um, I'm excited to see how the how the crowd how the crowd comes out, um, but we're gonna give them something to cheer about this time around. Well, the crowd will be out. <laughs> Trust me on that. I, I don't think there's any doubt. We've been looking forward to this game for about the past month, and uh, and we are we're, we're two, two, we we're are two, two days away. We're, we're two days yeah, away. Yeah, we are too, man. You know, when it comes to like, you know, I guess you can call it a rivalry. You know, for me, you know, it's personal. You know, what I'm saying like I. You know, I always like to come out and, you know, this is a team that, that has good DBs. They have a good D-line. You know, this is the team you want to come and play. You know, you want to bring your, your A game against. You know, they got some guys that I know, you know, Lucky, you know, Sales. 
Yeah, but, um, you know, ain't no friends when we out there, man. We out there to play ball. So, for me, I'm scratching to get out there. I can't wait. Um, you know, we had uh, your teammate Brady Oliveira on um, a, a few weeks ago. Yeah. And, you know, and obviously we were talking about, you know, the team overall. But he made a point of talking about you and your contributions to the offense, but also the selfless nature of what you're doing right now. I mean, listen, you've gotten the end zone three times. You've had some big catches moving the chains. But he also spoke about your commitment to the running game and how yeah. much of a difference maker you have been. People often forget about the wideouts when it comes to, you know, putting together those big drives like you did against the Stamps and you did against the Elks last week. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've always been a guy that plays with a ton of passion and you kind of spoke to it, doing what the team needs me to do to help win games. Yeah. But you also did a pretty selfless thing in coming back to Winnipeg when you probably could have made more money elsewhere in the league. Um, I mean, tell us a little bit about that decision and your role this year and um, how you've embraced it. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, God, you know, gives battles to certain people. Um, but it's how you respond to it. You know, me, you know, when it comes to, you know, the position, the position is always seen as, it's an ego position. It's a pride position. It's a position that, um, you know, being a receiver, you you know, you want the ball, you want the ball, you want the ball. But I've been around here and I've been in this league for a while now, and um, I understand what it takes to win. Um, and you know, sometimes it takes a sacrifice, and somebody's got to be the guy to make that sacrifice. And for me, you know, when it came down to you know ultimately making a decision to come back here. You know, my heart is with the people that are here. You know, the, my heart is with, you know, Brady. My heart is with, B, you know, B.A. and Dembski and, you know, watching his baby be born, not watching actually being at the, you know, the birth, but, you know, him, you know, bringing a, a child into this world, you know, and, it, it, you know, it's beautiful, man. Some of these people, they helped change my life. And for me, you know, like that sacrifice I was willing to take. And, you know, when it comes to doing some of the things that nobody is willing to do, you know, that's what I've been doing my whole life. You know, I've been doing those things and, you know, I've been the guy who always had to lead by example to do some of the things that nobody really wanted to do. And um, it's not even that they don't want to do it. It's just that I'm just more willing to do it and I'm willing to give more effort to do it. And it's good. It's crazy. You know, Brady played that for me. He, he let he wanted me to listen to what he had said, you know, because, you know, sometimes I joke around with him. And I say like little small little things to him to help bring out the best of him. But, you know, it, it definitely brought a smile to my face because, you know, sometimes those things do get unnoticed, you know, the blocking and all the stuff that you do around the box and everything like that. But I understand what it takes to win. You know, in order to win the Great Cup, in order to win a championship, you got to be able to run the ball. Period. I don't care how many receivers you got on your team. I don't care how many Kenny Lawlers. I don't care how many Dalton Shones or Dembskis that you have on your team. You need to be able to run the ball to win championships. And, you know, and sometimes I get used in those positions to to block more or whatever the case may be. But that is the standard of this team. Uh, Darvin Adams used to be here and he used to do the same exact thing. And he set the tempo. Um, I'm the guy who sets the tempo. Um, I think people around the league understand that and they see that and they know that. And, you know, for guys like you, I appreciate you for noticing, you know, because sometimes you do your ego and your pride do, does get to you like, man, like people don't even notice that I do those things. And until you actually see it and you hear it and you see how fans respond to you and how people, you know, send you messages of love. And, you know, it's cool, you know, but, um, you know, I have an obligation and I have a duty to be who I am in this offense and sometimes it causes me to run shorter routes. You know, sometimes it causes me to block more. Um, but the ultimate goal is to win. You know, I want to win football games, man, because when you win, none of it matters. And uh, sometimes, you know, you do want to feel the reward of catching the ball and getting touchdowns. And it comes with it, you know. And um, I don't know, I, I, I've, I've, I've had time to let everything sink in and, and be what it is and, I know I made the right decision because of the people that I hear. Um, so, you know, for me, you know, it's just a blessing. I'm extremely excited and still happy. And I'm just so grateful. And God has blessed me to still be here because I wouldn't want to be nowhere else. Showtime Sheed with us. Uh, Bombers Lions, 730 Thursday night at IG Field. Balfour first place in the Western Division. 
Um, how's practice been the last couple of days? I know it was a close one today. Tomorrow's the walkthrough. I mean, not, just fill us in on how things have gone since you guys got packed together off that bye week preparing for uh, the big one Thursday night. Nah, man, we're solid right now, man. Everybody's, you know, this is Kenny's second week back. You know, you can tell he's he's starting to get acquainted. You know, he's starting to settle in and, you know, he he's ready to go. You know, Dalton, you know, he was, he had, you know, went out and everything like that and he's ready to go. You know, all of us are ready to go. Um, we're excited. Like I said, like everybody's, you know, you can feel the energy. You can feel the energy on the defense. You can feel the energy on the offense, the coaching staff. You know, everybody knows what the goal is. Everybody knows where we're trying to get to, and we're not there yet. And uh, each week we're trying to build off of that energy. And uh, coming off the bye week and, and and getting the body back, people spending time with their family, everybody's itching at the chops to get out there. Uh, she, you mentioned the podcast, and I, I've joked. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not afraid to say it. You're a favorite of mine, uh, you know, both as a player but also as a guest. And I've said before that I, the passion that you speak about literally everything, like I could hear you describe people walking across the street. <laughs> um, but you've put a lot into this podcast and it right. is, um, I, you know, whether following people do with the, with the clips you put on your, on your social media, you know, on Instagram at Showtime Sheed, um, you know, or in it, um, you put a lot into this and it is a lot of you. I, I, there's a lot of people that I don't think even were aware that you were doing this. Tell yeah. us a little bit about this project, why you're doing it and what you're getting out of it. I, you know, I've been trying to work on life after football. And I know that God has put me in a position to speak and to inspire people and to, and to tell the stories that I tell, um, this podcast, I'm, well, I'm 10 episodes in. It's a place where, you know, people can come to, to feel vulnerable. Um, it's people for people to to hear my story, to hear not or not just to see a football player, but to hear the voice of one and to understand my background and where I come from and what I stand for. Um, I'm a family dude. You know, I'm an emotional guy. Um, but I, I just understand that, like, you know, like, this podcast is is meant to to inspire people to never stop chasing their dreams. Um, and each time, you know, I, sometimes I take a little long to put an episode out because I'm, you know, in season right now. But um, I put a lot into these. I put a lot of emotion into it and I put a lot of thought into it. It's not like I just wake up and I just, you know, and I just go. No, it's a lot of thought and a lot of emotion that go into these these episodes and, you know, and these topics that I choose. Um, but Showtime Speaks is is something that, will stick with me forever. Um, it's something that I want to continue to keep putting out there for people. Um, we all go through things in life and sometimes we just need a voice. We need a voice to listen to. We need a voice to hear, to inspire us or to give us, you know, that reassurance that, you know, you're not alone. And this podcast is something that, you know, you know, I just, I just, I just love it because I'm able to, to express myself and share the way I want to share. And it helps me understand that like, yo, like, your voice needs to be heard. And I don't want to just be an athlete that just plays football and goes out there and catch footballs and block people. I want people to hear, you know, what I'm about and, um, and, and, and what I, what I stand for. And for me, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this to, to where it's going and, um, and where I can take this thing. And, you know, I'm strongly, and I'm, I'm very passionate about it. And um, yeah, man, I mean, you know, it's, it's my thing. It's my thing. Yeah, well, your, your your thing is blowing people up and getting into the end zone and celebrating at IG Field, but it's certainly another. You have that club in your bag, and uh, I mean, listen, it's really well done, and it's obvious that there is a lot of the passion that you bring to football, and frankly, from what I can tell, everything you do in your life um, is there right now, and um, certainly Bomber fans, I think anyone would really enjoy it if you haven't checked it out, so... Get on uh, wherever you get your favorite pods and uh, wherever yeah, you're getting yeah, this program and get Showtime uh, Showtime Sheet. Um, yeah, appreciate appreciate it. It. Get them, We got to get them sponsorships, too. We got to get them going, man. Listen, you, you're the guy for it, man. I just <laughs> listen. I, I was watching your whole thing. You got the you got the commercials. You got BP. You got listen. I'm trying to get like you, man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we could. Uh, there's always room in the WST network for someone with the talent on, of Showtime Sheet. I, on, you, you focus on Thursday night, but okay, uh, I will. Hey, listen, we've always got a spot for you here right now, and uh, we'd love to do something. Heck, if even after the season, we can talk a little NFL. I mean, on, maybe man. maybe we could potentially have a rematch of my Chiefs and your Eagles in the Super Bowl Come coming up in February. <laughs> listen, I went to the game. so I listen, know, I know I, you listen, did. It was... 
I, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that I've, I've stepped into, you know, my connections of people. I, I'm, you know, it, it's been good, man. I, that's why it's just been such a blessing. Every day is a blessing, man. Hey, you, you know, know what? Just on that quickly, um, because I mean, we had a great chat when uh, we bumped into each other at the uh, Taste yeah. of the Bombers event, and yeah. I, I mean, I asked you about that, but. Uh, fill people in because anyone that was paying attention to your Instagram Super Bowl yeah. week, I mean, you were rolling with Philadelphia legends. Yeah. Um, you were in, yeah. and I mean, like I, I remember the experience, like the first time we went and did the show on Radio Row at the Super Bowl, and been lucky enough to been to a number of those games. But I mean, I felt like I was doing it again for the first time, and I wasn't rolling with the people that you were. Man, listen, man, I'm I'm strongly connected with a lot of people. And, you know, my brother, uh, Tory Smith, he, he, you know, he's really big in the industry of the NFL network and he's done, he's done a lot of stuff. He's got his own 707. You know, I, I connect like me and him have a strong connection and he, you know, he invited me, you know, to the Super Bowl. And listen, it's crazy. I met Goodell and I've met, you know, I've met so many people. I shook Drake's hand. It was wild. I mean, KD, you pulling it all up, man. It's been, like it was, it was a life changing experience that I'll never forget. I mean, we sat at the fifty yard line and watched the game with the with you know it was crazy. Rihanna was performing. I mean, it just was. It was a time. Michael Vick. It was. It was a time. It was a time. Um, but you know, just that experience alone, you know, it just helps you realize that, man. Once you you know, you can, you, everything is about your relationships that you build, man. You know, sometimes it's not about, you know, the 100%. money you make or, or the things that you do. It's about the relationship that you build. And for the first time, and I'll say this, I'll say this too, for the first time, I didn't need to be in the NFL to validate who I was. You know, those two championships rings that I've won help solidify that I don't need that to be who I want to be. Um, having those rings on, you know, my CFL bomber Grey Cup championships rings are up there with Super Bowl rings and up there with Hall of Fame rings. And, you know, to have conversations with Tony Dorsett and Ray Lewis and oh, my goodness, man, it, it, it was just it was a life changing experience that it allowed me to tap into, you know, who I'm who I truly am from from the core. And not just what I do as a person, and you know, it, I, you'd look better uh, at the next Super Bowl. Three rings, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> know, baby. That's what we shoot for. That's the goal, man. That's why we're here. Hey, listen. Um, thanks so much for the time. Uh, we always love having you on the program. Everyone is uh, giving a lot of love to you and what you're doing on the field and off the field. And uh, I appreciate it. Have a hell of a game. Go get them on Thursday it. night. I, I look forward know. to uh, a very fun conversation on this program on Friday about what's going down Thursday night at IG Field. She, Come on. You're, <laughs> you're the best, buddy. Have a great one and good luck. You too, man. Appreciate it. There it is. The one and only Rashid Bailey, 88 in your program the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, I could talk to him for hours. So much fun. And uh, as I said, just the passion of Rashid Bailey is, um, listen, he brings a lot to the club. And I think, you know, we heard it from Brady earlier this year. Um, you know, what he, the decision that he made to come back for less money when there was more on the table elsewhere speaks a lot about the, uh, the, the man that he is, how committed he is to this community, this organization, this team. Um, and continues to make a, a big impact, even when you might not see it show up on the stat sheet in his own personal stats. Huge thanks to Sheet for jumping on today. More Bomber stuff. I saw Bonfire and the boys popping in. Uh, they've got a special guest tonight, too. Check out Bonfire Sports and Bombing's Twitter uh, for the exact time that they're going to be jumping on that. Uh, but again, so many storylines and so much to get to before the game Thursday night, IG Field. And Hoping to have Farhan on tomorrow, Farhan Lalji, to talk a little bit about exactly what, we, uh, what we're looking at for this game in terms of the visitors and the incredible 6-1 and one start that BC has put together. All right, we got to get Remo back in here just before we do that. Um, long weekend's coming up. And I know some of the liquor stores have been closed and there's issues. You know what's open? 
and your best place to go? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Little Brown Jug down on William Avenue. Now, if you are sticking around on the long weekend and looking for a great place to have some incredible brews in a great atmosphere, if you haven't already checked out that patio down at Little Brown Jug, what are you waiting for? Uh, but the best part of there is you can try all the beers and you can pick up whatever you want to go as well. That being said, if you can't make it down, you'll find Little Brown Jug, Generic Lager, all their seasonal beers, anywhere you get great beer. Find out more online at littlebrownjug.ca. But uh, I would definitely schedule a stop down on William Avenue at the brewery and tap room yourself. Um, we've got uh, the Wyndham Championship coming up this weekend on the golf scene. We'll kind of get into that tomorrow on the lock shop. Uh, but I know our friends down at Breezy Bend are... Uh, enjoying all the hard work and labor of uh, Craig and their uh, their uh, maintenance team because the brand new 7th and 15th greens are open. It's been an incredible project, completely changed the course as they continue to improve it. If you're thinking about a long-term home for you and your family on a golf course, uh, Winnipeg's one of the top private clubs. Breezy Bend is the spot. Find out more at breezybend.ca or give her a pal Corey Johnson a call over at the clubhouse and get on that waiting list for 2024 i tweeted this out last night the countdown is on this is when i get really excited because aikens lake is about to be here gonna be there on the long weekend and um as i've said many times my favorite three four days of the entire year i did see pitt tweet out last night that tommy from texas did and i've never even heard about this but the triple crown he caught a trophy walleye, a trophy trout, <clears throat> and a trophy pike, I believe. Three different trophy fishes in three days. So the fish are hungry right now. The pressure is on to come back with some massive picks. Yeah, there, <laughs> there it is. Lake trout, walleye. Let's show these pictures, Reem. They are just <laughs> hopefully the uh, you know very very happy. Like look at those beasts. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, That's shout huge. out to Tommy. Tommy has has raised the bar. Um, so I hope I'll be back on Tuesday of next week with something similar, although not sure I've got that club in my bag. Akinslake.com is the website to find out more. Plan, I mean, there is simply no better trip. If you're thinking about a corporate outing or getaway where you can be on the water in less than two hours from the city of Winnipeg, Aikens Lake is the spot. You can also find out more information on Twitter at Aikens Lake, our pal Pitt Turan. We'll be happy to take care of you. Um, Gold Eyes are back on the road after a fun um, homestand. Last few of the weekend wasn't great. They did get a win yesterday. It was a strange game. I guess that might have been a makeup game because it was a 5.30 start. So the teams could, I think, hit the road afterwards. But they do begin a series tonight in Kansas City. And uh, that's a long drive, as uh, I can attest to. So I think that is a big reason why they moved the uh, the start time up for that special time. But fishing KC this weekend and uh, on the road on uh, on the weekend as well, uh, playing right through the long weekend against the Monarchs. Uh, and then they'll be back against the Lincoln Salt Dogs a week today. So get to goldeyes.com, check out the promo schedule, and make another plan. And thanks to everyone that joined us last week over at um, uh, at the, the ballpark for such a great night with all our friends from Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, let's get Remus back in here. I do want to hit the cool bet lines, but uh, Remus, I've been talking to Marat and Sheed and Jelani Watson-Gale, um, wondering uh, if we've had any more movement in the Major League Baseball trade deadline. There actually was a big deal during that, and shout out to Bailey and... Everyone in the chat, uh, Justin Bailey Ver is our insider. Like yeah, we, nothing gets by us because of her. Justin Verlander acquired by the Astros for the Mets top two outfield prospects. Wow. So Verlander and Scherzer signing what signing the big deals with the Mets in the summer or last sorry, last offseason, and they're both traded. Verlander back with Houston, who what they won the World Series last year. He's been there before. Uh, nice ad for them. Uh, the Phillies added uh, pitcher Michael Lorenzen as well just now. And earlier, what, the Blue Jays acquired Paul DeJong from the from Cards. Braves got lefty reliever Brad Hand 
from the Rockies. Uh, Justin Verlander, the big the big one, though, uh, going back to Houston. So that's where we're in the trade deadline. Another another hilarious story of the off-season champions in another sport. The Mets. The Mets. Mets. You're, you're not wrong, actually. Uh, <laughs> it's someone tw- I saw some, like, the Mets were the most bet team in the preseason. I saw plus 1,100 uh, be- before someone posted that. And now they're like, like plus like 11,000. I don't know, plus like 6,600. <laughs> done? Uh, like they're done. They're trading everyone. And yeah, we are all crowning all oh, the Mets. Steve Cohen spending all this money and they're eating a lot of salary, but they did get some nice prospects uh, in the deals. But yeah, you're right. I mean, being the off season, I think being the off season champion is a bit of a curse. Uh, we saw with the Jets. You know, I watched one of you know because this week uh, a couple of years ago was a big week where they got Schmidt and Dylan and re-signed Bianc, and we were like, oh, the Jets are stacked on. Or no, signed Paul Stasny was the one. And Dylan and Schmidt, and we're like, oh, the Jets offseason champion. And it was, did not work out. Ottawa last summer, big offseason champions, didn't make the playoffs. I remember Dallas, it was the year before they made the cup final in the bubble. Um, we're like, oh, they've really stocked up here, and it didn't work out. So being offseason champions um, sounds nice in the offseason, but it hasn't really translated, I believe, to uh, titles. As it stands right now in the NHL, who are the offseason champions? We, yeah, we've had this talk. Uh, Toronto, I think Dallas. I think Dallas is looking good. I don't know if there's been like if anyone. Matt DeShane can still play. Like yeah. if he can still contribute. I mean, I guess they got him on a relatively reasonable deal, didn't they? Yeah, I'd have to go back. Carolina, I think, has done really well. But they got Orlov. It's funny. It was like we're so on top of this a month ago for July 1. Now it's a month later. And... Well, the funny thing was there just wasn't that much. Yeah. I mean, the free agency market was so light this year, uh, and that's going to okay. totally change next year in, uh, in, in, I, in a lot of ways. I'll say Carolina has done well. They, you know, they had question marks in goalie, and they signed their two guys for really cheap deals, short-term deals, Ranta and Anderson. And they've they, got Kachekov ready to yeah. go. They locked up Aho to that long-term deal, 9.75 mil AAV. That kicks in next season. They signed Bunting, three-year deal, 4.5. And they signed Orlov. That was a two-year deal for 7.75. Um, and they also got Tony D'Angelo as well. They brought him back. Who knows if that's going to last. Um, Brandon Lemieux also signed with them. I like Carolina. Um I think maybe maybe they're the or what were Ottawa getting? Or could Ottawa go for part two with the the Brinkat trade, then signing Tarasenko? Didn't they sign a goalie as well? Yeah, Corpy Corpusalo. Yeah, they got Corpusalo. Um, you know, they got Chitrin uh, last year at the deadline. Ottawa's. I think I don't think they're tight. They have the title, but that's a good good debate. I I think Ottawa. It's an interesting one. Yeah, with you on that. All right. Um, let's get to the cool bet lines. And then, uh, listen, I can't believe it's taken me this long to mention the biggest long shot winner picked on this program all season long from last night. We will get to that in a second, though. Um, the big Korean, my guy, Hyunjin Ryu, is back and starting for the Blue Jays tonight against the Orioles. Blue Jays a very slight favorite on the cool bet lines, minus 109. Orioles, minus 104. Other games, and I'll give you a little tease. I do like the Marlins tonight for the cool bet play of the day. Sandy Alcantara was just absolutely brilliant last year, has had a tougher season, but he's coming off a complete game, one hit win, or one run win, um, and they're going up against the Phillies. I'm leaning on a guy that we know is one of the best in the game to get a big win for his club. Those teams separated by a half game in the standings right now. So I'm on the Marlins minus 128. Also talked about the uh, Cubs tonight. Um, they're in a good spot taking on the uh, the Reds with their ace on the hill. And uh, did you see Zach Granke right now, Remo for the Royals. 1-11 and 11 on the season. Oh. And uh, oh. you know that the Royals, we've talked about how bad the A's are all season long. 
They've only won two games more than Oakland right now. It's an absolute disaster in KC. Thank God for the Chiefs. What happened? Yeah, everyone's forgot about the Royals, and they were really good for a couple of years. But they were, I remember before they won the World Series, they were really bad for a long time. And I guess we're back at that cycle with, uh, with the Royals, and that's unfortunate. And Zach Greinke's been around for a long time, had a lot of success. I think it shows you that a lot of success this year. <laughs> not yet, not a lot this year. So uh, that's that's a tough one, Huss. Uh, the guy that I was mentioning though, Justin Steele, who uh, eleven He's to good. three for the Cubs, uh, sub three ERA, one twelve WHIP. He's on the hill tonight, and um, he has, a, any word on Stroman? Is he still potentially going to be uh, headed elsewhere? Or? I don't think so. It's not the Cubs load up. I forget who they got yesterday. They got someone yesterday who I had on my fantasy. Get who they got. I thought maybe they got someone, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, anyways, other games tonight uh, out there. Red Sox, Mariners, a good tilt. D-backs and Giants. That's a pick em, minus 106 on either oh, side. The Cubs got, uh, yeah, third baseman Jim or Candelario from, uh, from Washington. Yeah, that was their move. So they're going, man, they're, they're right there with... Um, with San Diego just outside the wild card, but again, they have a very solid run differential, and maybe they think they can get get back in it. They've had some big wins lately. All right, I mentioned this early on the program, but I'm stunned right now. The Bombers are now up to six point favorites in this game against BC on uh, on the week on uh, Thursday. The total is forty five and a half, and the money line is minus two thirty eight. Argos are eight and a half point favorites in Calgary. The Alouettes are two and a half point favorites in Hamilton. BLM back on the sixth game after somehow getting injured in the victory formation. <laughs> I still can't believe that. And uh, Ottawa's in Sask as one point favorites. Now, I will point you to our Winnipeg Sports Talk. If you go to the exclusives and click on Winnipeg Sports Talk Parlay, how about this nice little boost? Bombers to win. They don't need to cover the, the six points. They just need to win and the Sea Bears to win oh. on Friday. Plus 185. I think it was about plus 160 if you, if you do it yourself. We got it in at plus 185. So if you want to get a nice hometown parlay with the Bombers and Sea Bears, we got a nice number for you up at Cool Bet. I will be getting on that, and I look forward to hopefully cashing that and feeling very good about both Thursday and Friday night's results for our teams. Uh, get on over to CoolBet.com. Women's World Cup odds. We will do the Wyndham Championship odds in the lock shop tomorrow. Those are all up right now. Hideki Matsuyama amongst the favorites at 20 to 1, but a pretty wide open field. So we will dive into that tomorrow on the lock shop. Subscribe to the lock shop podcast wherever you get. And, uh, as they say, uh, lots going on with my pal Dusty and the guys over in Edmonton right now, as I'm, as I'm sure you've seen, exciting stuff for our friends out west as well. All right, it's time to get to the track. Live racing continues tonight, 7.30. I will be live in attendance tomorrow, taking my folks, really looking forward to that. I'm already getting hungry just thinking about what is to come in that dining room. If you haven't been already, 885-3330. Got to make a plan to get out and check that incredible world-class buffet with the prime rib but um last night remus was a very very big night first of all i got a dm i was out um watching the blue jay game but i got a dm from let me just make sure i've got his name right i believe it was e oh no tom mitchell so Tom said, hey, you got any picks for ASD tonight? And I said, well, first of all, beware. Our picks have not been great over all this summer. And I don't have the ones that I have in front of me. However, I do know that we are both on Drizzy tonight in like race two or race three. I can't remember race. But if you see a, race, a horse Drizzy, go for it. And sure enough, Drizzy came through with a big win. So that was nice to give out a winner. What I really wish I did was thought that I would tell him my other pick, Wits Gato, because if you recall yesterday, Reem, Wits Gato was the long shot in that field. A $3 bet paid 80 bucks. My biggest week, well, there's the biggest bet outside, I think, of one of the triactors. 
But there it was, 53.50 on a $2 bet. As the Cinnaboy Down said, they blew up the tote board. Not mine. This could be the turnaround I needed to really get on a run, especially at a run where I'm going to be there this week. So I'm very excited to get into these picks right now, considering that big winner last night. Yeah, that's Wits uh, Rojo uh, paying, what, fifty three fifty on a $2. I had Drizzy on a $5, made like nineteen twenty five or something uh, return. So uh decent return, not a crazy one uh, like Wits Rojo there. So we'll try to do it again tonight. Uh, you know, I was hot to start. I've cooled off. I've been okay. But I think you're really heating up towards the end of the season here. I uh, I have been, and we've got some very very interesting, uh, interesting races tonight as well to uh, to get to. Um, all right, let's uh, let's make something happen here. Um, we'll start it off. Do you have your uh, Do you have your picks? Where are you going? Okay, wait. We got a Bobby Shed update from Rob Somerville. He says, "Oh, breaking news." Okay, per John Schneider, Blue Jays shortstop Bobby Shed had an MRI last night. Revealed no si- revealed no significant structural damage. Just inflammation day to day for now. Then adds, seems like the Jays dodged a bullet. Oh, I'm so happy. I have Bichette in a fantasy team that I'm like in, I'm near the lead. So uh, that's great news. I, I, looking at the waiver wire, it was ugly. So uh, that really but, is... uh, great news for the Blue Jays, too. You know, who cares? I'm sure you're all invested in my fantasy team, but really great news for the Jays <laughs> who are going, going for the playoffs. I think a lot of people thought when DeJong got picked up from the uh, from the Cardinals that maybe that meant that he'd be out for a while. Um, but I think, hey, better safe than sorry. And uh, I think they've got a, a heck of a player that, I mean, he's been one of the top hitters in baseball all season long. So, yeah, you got to take care of him, make sure that he's not in, you know, it's not a you know, harming himself or anything can get any worse. But as soon as you can get him back on the track, you need to do exactly that. All right, Reem, let's get to the picks. Okay, I'm starting what, uh, with what race. What do we got here today? I'm starting race three. So are you yeah, on I one and two? Started, I actually started quite early in the uh, in the bet. I do have race one. And I'm making a win bet on number two, Eagle Express. So uh, Eagle Express, there's the uh, the pick. And I'm actually on race two as well. I've got a 1-6 Exacta box, double-barreled Elite, the favorite, and Dawn of the Devil, which is a new horse at the track. So uh, I've got, yeah, just a $2 up both ways on that. And then I actually did the same thing on race three, this time with a 3-6 McKeg. And all an old WST favorite, McKeg yeah. with Crown Royal. Okay. Another WST favorite. So we've got McKeg and Crown Royal. Either way, two bucks on the both sides of four dollar bet. I saw McKeg and I really wanted to bet a lot, but it's paying it's seven to five. So I was like, okay. Like you have to think, what do you win uh when you win? And it's not much with those odds. So I did a tri actor box. I do have McKeg with Oh no, I don't have Crown Royal. Do I? Uh yes I do me. I have, number three I have, yes I have McCaig with Persibility and Crown Royal and a Triactor box. So you're rolling with the uh, with the uh, program selections as they say. Yes I'm going with the program selection box. That is that is. Uh, do you have race four? I do. Uh, okay I don't so you can go with that. I one. have. Uh, how could I not pick this horse? It's a smart call. Uh, I'm taking smart call. <laughs> To win, <laughs> I don't know. I saw the saw it's program selection, eighteen uh, percent win percentage. Although uh, Mia's Majesty looks like the ve- very heavy favorite here, maybe uh, Smart Call can uh, make me feel like a smart one. I'm gonna put this. This final race is really interesting. Uh, okay, anyways, race five. I do have a straight win bet. Uh, do do do. Race five. I'm going with number five. To yeah. win. I like and that the, is uh, Kim's Texas Bling. Buy y'all is really good, but what's interesting about this race is that it is a, a six furlong. And Kim's Texas Bling was unreal. It's one back to back at five and a half furlongs, and then has been in the, some of the longer races. So I think getting back to six 
think that puts Kim's Texas Bling in a good spot. And of course, by y'all, another one of our favorites, the big one, was second last. So it has just been three first, two seconds. I'm going to take Kim. I think all the money will be on by y'all. It'll be a very, very chalky favorite. So I think Kim's Texas Bling, an old-time favorite, is uh, is in a good spot. I don't have this one on my board. Uh, oh, wait, do I? Wait, what? That was race five. No, I don't have this one, but I did want to do a buy all Kins Texas bling exacta. I don't have the. Sorry, I certainly I'm... do that. And then you got race six. I have race six. Yeah, I got a winner here. Uh, viral because we're trying to go viral here with our hot dog post. Check our Instagram and <laughs> yes. our TikTok today. Our YouTube shorts. Like it. Follow us on all those. The links in the description. We're going to we're trying to go. You know, social media viral, not like a viral infection. So viral. <laughs> To, to win. <laughs> so I'm going viral. All right. So, and I have just figured out my, wait a sec. No, it wasn't load abroad. I'm trying to put together a, um, was it Cato's Lady? I'll tell you mine. I got a nice Lady exacta, exacta box for this one. I got Cato's Lady and Lipstick Lady. Let's go. Nicely done. Well, I'm I'm putting together, I'm 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 doing a a, a triactor box, the one dollar triactor box, and I think I'm gonna take Forever Dreams, the favorite. I'm definitely taking Queen in the North, number seven, and geez, I guess I'll roll with. I guess seven, eight, nine's tough to have all those. Cato's Lady. It's weird that Cato's, although if you look back to the shorter the shorter distances, mm -hmm. five and a half furlongs was second. This was at Sam Houston. Has not run a shorter one. So, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll go $1.579. And that is going to be the end. Yeah, you're not doing Cato's lady, lipstick lady? No. Not no, going for that, the lady, the lady, uh, exactly. The, the lady, the lady double? Yeah. <laughs> no, I like, I like Queen in the North. I think that kind of counts. It's undervalued. I should have done Lipstick Lady, uh, Cato's Lady, and Queen of the North. That's that would have been a nice match together. <laughs> um, fun show today. I'm actually going to head over to Glendale. Uh, shout out to Chow and my pals that are uh, doing a golf tourney today. I'm going to get back to do a little emceeing and uh, raise a little money for charity, and then. We're going to be back tomorrow. By the way, we're going to do a bit of an earlier lock shop, I think 10 o'clock our time, so pay attention for that. Our golf picks, which have been pretty good over the last couple months. Um, and then tomorrow on the program, much more on this big game um, on Thursday night. And uh, Is Farhan going to jump on tomorrow, Reem? Farhan is good, yeah. Farhan is in for tomorrow. That'll be fun talking to him, getting his insight on BC. We'll have practice updates as well. Scott Billick. Uh, hopping on, so. Um, Billick, yeah, my I mean, Sea Bears buddy. I'm always sitting at that table with Billick. I'm sure he'll have some takes on that as well. And um, obviously, maybe a little bit more post trade deadline on Major League Baseball. And mm -hmm. if anything happens in the NHL, we will definitely talk about it. I don't know whether we need to manufacture things. Although, I have been waiting. You mentioned some of the uh, you know people doing oh they're top. Like I think Brandon was doing his top 2.0 moments, and yes. everyone's in this time. The one thing that I haven't done, and this is for fans that have season tickets or people that go to a lot of games, I have not done my rankings of the top 10 home games of the upcoming schedule. Maybe I'll have to drop that tomorrow because we should... I have been a power poll of, you know, listen, if you're picking, if you're in a season ticket draft, Mm -hmm. What's number one on the power pole and go through? That's, um, and there's many different reasons for that. So I'll, I, I will put that together. Maybe we'll drop that tomorrow. On that's really strong I, YouTube uh, content. I was just about to say that's that could be good for, really uh, for strong. TikTok or whatever. And I saw Sakaris and Price doing that on their channel. So it's that point in the summer. Brandon had his like top Jets moments. I could say we could do worst Jets moments because I love talking about Game five. Kevin Hayes, game I lo five. Love Blake talking Fred. about game five. We can talk about game six. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot we can talk about. Uh, never, pushback never this year. What else is there? Some, you know, watching Mark Andre Fleury just stone the Jets over and over. Uh, you know what the, the worst thing is? Game five was always synonymous mm -hmm. with the St. Louis series. Yeah. 
but it now does have company after game five against Vegas and oh. what bonus what Bones had to say afterwards. Oh, Not no. that I want to debate which one was worse. God knows I can't handle it that. It could be oh man. Uh no, I think game <laughs> five against St. Louis was more was more heartbreaking. Like I would compare St. Lake which game was worse would you pick? Um the overtime loss to Montreal. <laughs> this is this is Jets misery you talk. The overtime loss to Montreal in game four. Uh, game six Logan against Stanley, two goal game. Yeah, that's the, the Logan Stanley. Two, one of two Winnipeg Jets at 2.0 to ever have two goals in a playoff game. I think I stumped a lot of people. That was a that was a trivia question at the yeah. sports trivia night, either the first or second. Okay. I can't remember. The game six against St. Louis, where they no showed and kind of tried at the end. And then the game five against Vegas, where they had a lot of injuries um, in that one. Like Shifley, Ehlers, Morrissey. No, Ehlers played, but he was not 100% yeah. Morrissey out as well. Um, so <laughs> T. Will says Winnipeg rubbing salt yeah. in the in the wound. Tom. Listen, this, we have the wounds as well. It's it's you know hey. it's group therapy as you will. That being I, said, I am focused on the top 10 games on next year's kay. home schedule. Do it. Not on moments of misery, and maybe I I, I guarantee it won't come anywhere close to the success of the yard dog reel, but we will have something to uh, to talk about tomorrow and much more, of course. Huge game for the Bombers on uh, on Thursday night. We'll be all over that. Maybe get a little, well, we will talk to Farhan, maybe a little bit more getting ready for that game. And uh, of course, a little hockey, some baseball, and uh, countdown to Seabears playoffs on Friday as well. Great stuff today. Shout out to Remo for uh, his excellent TikTok work as the CTO, just continuing to put more clubs in his bag. Um, big shout out to Rashid Bailey, to Jelani Watson Gale, and of course, our good friend Murata Tesh. Thanks to everyone to join us today. Have a great one tonight, and we will see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. with one more sleep before the Bombers get back at the British Columbia Lions Thursday at IG Field. Thanks for being with us today, everyone, and have a great evening. Oh, my God. Oh! Oh! Shut it down. Oh my! Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.